All right, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of VESN Esports. We are hosting and streaming Don Tyson School of Innovation today. Um, they are playing in the Play Versus Cup in round two, and they are going to be playing Eastside Prep. So super excited to get to show you this match. Uh, these are the top uh, teams from across all 50 states. So uh, we'll see how they fare today. But Don Tyson representing the state of Arkansas. Love it that we're here. Uh, thank you to Coach Sniff for uh, letting us stream your match. And I, I can't wait to watch them get started here. Uh, Co host should be here. I'm going to see if we can get Coach Sniff uh, in here on the stream real quick. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to him for just a minute. And and see how he's feeling before this match. Now, this should be a really, really good match. Like I said, these are top teams from across uh, the United States. They're all playing in the Play Versus Cup. They've all been invited to play in this tournament. So I can't watch this, wait to watch them again. Uh, we we were able to watch a couple of games of Don Tyson. They are state champions four times. And let's see if we can get uh, uh, Coach Sniff in here to talk to us. Hey, I think we got Wu Pao and Strino in here. Are you guys in here with me? Hey, and I, I think I think we have Coach Sniff in here also. Hello. Hey, hey, uh, welcome to the show. Man, it's it's nice to actually talk to you in person. Um, this is Coach Sniff here, and he is, what are y'all now, the four-time uh, champion for the state of Arkansas in League of Legends? Uh, you, you got a dynasty going, man. Everywhere that I see your name or, or see on Discord people talking about you, it's, it's, it's the Don Tyson dynasty, so... Uh, congrats to you. Congrats to your team for making this. We've watched your team play. You have a very good, very highly skilled team, some exceptional players, and it's a pleasure just to be able to watch your team play. How do you, how do you feel about your team's uh, uh, chances here today? I agree. I, now, I did get to watch a little bit of Eastside. Uh, I found it actually on their Twitch earlier this week. Uh, they they look like a very solid team. And, and like you said, it's a whole different level of competition here. You're, you're dealing with the best in every state right now. So um, can you tell us a little bit? Uh, I know you've probably watched some of our streams uh, from your team. You know, we talk a lot about Laugh Wizard, uh, a lot about Catamatics. And kind of their synergy and I, I think you said they're friends and they play together a lot and and I I could believe that definitely because they both seem to know what the other one's thinking all the time Okay, Coach, uh, I know you said that uh, Sushi was the, the secret uh, to the dynasty, but uh, do you have anything else for any of the other coaches out there that, that are looking at your uh, Nick Saban-esque dynasty that you have built here in League of Legends and, and what we could do to improve our League of Legends program? <laughs>
Now, right, there, there's a ton that goes in this game. I know people that don't play it or haven't been around it don't realize it. I myself didn't until I started with eSports, and, and I told several people, this game has the largest learning curve of any game I've ever played. And uh, um, for your team um, to do as well as they do and to excel like they do and do it consistently just says a, a lot about your program and a lot about your kids. Uh, kind of how did you get into the eSports? Is it something that you started on campus? Or we've talked to some other coaches and, and at times it's been where, you know, it's something that the kids wanted to start on campus. Or can you tell us a little bit about that? Hey, this, this game's about to get started here. Uh, we are on a delay here, but um, they are ramping up here, and it looks like they're going to leash, so we're going to go ahead and commentate the game. Coach, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting us do this. Thank you for letting us highlight eSports in the state of Arkansas. Uh, thank you for letting us watch your program. Uh, great, great luck to you and your team out here today on the Rift. We, we hope you get that W, and I, and I can say that because we're not in regular season, right? <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, thank you for everything you do for esports. I know it's an underappreciated role. We know it. We, we're working it too. So thank you for, for putting the time in with your kids. Really appreciate you. All right, Chuck, we got us a hot one right here. Look, the Laugh Wizard's already going off. I have my Laugh Wizard t-shirt on right now, by the way. Uh, it says Laugh Wizard plus uh, Catamatics equals GG. So there we go. I, I, I'm rocking that, yeah. <laughs> Man, they started off with a nice invade there. But uh, Don Tyson is going to be in the blue. And uh, I keep I keep forgetting the name of the other team, Chuck. East side, east side. Hey, there's Wu Pal. All right, cool. No, it's all right. Uh, east, east side's gonna be in the red, just so everybody knows. And man, they're coming after Laugh Wizard already. Hey, they're gonna try to gank up here in this top lane, and I don't blame them. Yeah, I did. I did watch them just a little bit on Twitch. Uh, their Wu Pao and they're a very solid team. Uh, the first match I watched, it looked like they were going to lose. Actually, uh, they came back and ended up dominating the, the the rift. And so they obviously have a lot of tenacity there, and a very strong team, very strong team play. So they they look really good to me. There goes my guy right there, Woo Pal. <laughs> my t-shirt's working right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that because uh, he actually started Doran Shield in most of the other matches that we watched. So 
the choke ass going more defensive, I guess, against the volley. But now volley does quite a bit of magic damage too. I, do, I, I believe. Isn't that correct? I like that Don Tyson got the Victor Comfort pick in the middle. Uh, Catamatics is obviously, well, I didn't get to see the draft, but um, he obviously is a very, very powerful Rumble player, uh, but he's also a very solid Victor player, so uh, I'm, I'm watching that middle lane too. And yeah, you, you did a good job of pointing out all the CC they've got in that bottom lane because you got really two supports uh, playing down there. So man, that the, the amount of crowd control they're going to have is going to be insane in team fights. I like the Hecarim pick from Eastside. I, I believe that one of the matches I watched, they play, actually played the Hecarim. Uh, no, actually that was a different match I watched. I, I, I'll correct myself there. Uh, Hecarim's still really strong jungle. He, he can get in there on that back line. There's really nothing you can do about it with his ultimate. His mobility is just crazy. Yeah, we are. I like that uh, trading back and forth right there. The Zillion doing a good job. Uh, Seraphine doing a good job there too, though. So... Here we got a we got a gank coming here. Let's see what and here comes that Hecker mobility right there. Nice job by East Phantom. Oh yeah. Nice job. Woo pig, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sheen makes a huge difference in early game. I know you like to run that on the Sona, and man, I didn't realize how much uh, of a edge that gives you in early game until I saw you actually running it. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, hopefully people can hear us now. Oh, sorry about that. See, this is why no you problem. have to drive, Chuck. I know, it's it's so tough. I, I need to live closer to work. <laughs> <laughs> and if we can get a local on Discord, if we can just get a local view, um, if that's not too much trouble. Yep, sure can. Hang on just a second. Hey, right, go ahead, buddy. I'll, I'll get it. They're doing an early Drake here. Uh, of course, we, have, we know that Don Tyson loves to... To try to get in there and get those early drakes, but looks like um, uh, East Side's got the upper hand on this one. They're gonna get the they're gonna get the first drake. So good job of Kane, good job of Karma coming over and picking that up for East Side and and getting that early drake lead, which they needed that because even with the drake pickup, uh, Don Tyson still got a small gold lead, uh, mainly due to, you know, of course, uh, top lane and, and the Hecarim jungle as well. Yeah, they did a nice job of setting up on that Drake there. And nice push in by the bottom lane. Man, they're going to fight over the red buff over here too, so... They're going to be uh, contesting uh, the entire rift. Uh, I love it. Lots and lots of action. Yep, and this stage, that's what we expect. Right? That's what we're, we're going to be treated to for sure in this series, no doubt about it.
Don Tyson looking really good on their CS too down here. Uh, across the board, really. The only one that's really losing on CS and lane is uh, Bot up against the Draven, and that's kind of early game. That's pretty tough to compete with the Draven. Yeah, it really is. And you know, I think I think the picks down down Bot lane is just kind of where they're going to hold their own. Uh, get to level six, get those ultimates, and then of course they're going to hopefully try to feed uh, Hecarim and Volleybear, and then you, you bring in Seraphine and Zillion to kind of CC, and they're going to be able to wipe the map, and plus Victor as well. There's a lot of damage that Victor can output, so I think that's I think that's a smart draft, personally. Well, I like the Zillion with the Resurrection, too, so I mean, that just pretty much negates a kill, so you, you get a revive, and then if you throw a Guardian Angel or something on top of that, man, you, you, you pretty much can make one person unkillable. Absolutely. I see Volley going back right here. I wonder if Volley's going to pick up early boots, maybe. Uh, maybe. Oh, going to pick up some health, looks like. So, Volley Bear has got <laughs> armor, got health, got damage, uh, got early boots. I think that Volley's <laughs> just going to kind of get a little bit of everything and kind of see how the game goes and build off that, it looks like. And that's the reason why the wizard's laughing. Very funny. Yeah, he's, like I said, he's something to watch, but this whole team really is, so uh, each side's really going to have their hands full here with this Don Dyson team. I mean, they're they're definitely, definitely a talented team, very, very good. I said best in the state of Arkansas, but uh, they're, they're still got to be up there in my book, just uh, nationwide. Now, I like the early pickup from the, the Cinder from the Hecarim. I think you put a little bit of damage, make, make clear and jungle a little bit easier. And the early cooldown boots, I mean, I think that Hecarim's look, really looking to spam those abilities and put some pressure on these lanes uh, coming up really soon. Yeah, I've seen some Hecarim play here lately where they play him really tanky, a uh, real tanky build just so he can stay in fights longer because he has so much AoE damage. He's just going to stay in there and just spam damage as long as he can. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I kind of figure he's probably going to go Sunfire. Sunfire is really strong on Hecarim right now. It's a really good pickup. Um, but we'll, we'll see what he builds into. Yeah, this Draven, uh, he may go Shield Bow down here. I'm not sure, uh, Wu Pao. But he's obviously uh, building some life steal there. So, going to try to increase his survivability. And he already has plenty of sustained damage. So, Oh, nice yeah. ultimate there by the Seraphine, but here here we're going to have that ultimate right there. We're going to have the resurrection on the Seraphine, so yeah. <laughs> negate that kill right there. Well, that bad, yeah. rewind it. This Draven is definitely going to be a problem. Uh, out to an early lead already. Uh, already got a small bounty. So, yeah, you're right. He, he's That, that kill right there is probably going to put him really close to that full Mythic. Yeah, and it looks like he, he, he did get the starter boots, but I, I'll guarantee you he's going to try to rush that rush that first mythic because once he gets that power spike, he's going to dominate that bottom lane. They're going to have to be real careful with that. Yeah, he's backing right now. I'm very curious if yeah, he yeah, picks up right here. Oh, yeah, it's going to be an eclipse. That's, and that's, okay. that's like 11 minutes, Wu Pao. Yeah, that's, that's really, really fast. <laughs> I mean, we thought 12-minute Mythics was fast in the last game, but 11 minutes, wow. That is some serious CS power right there. Yeah, and yeah. they're neck and neck on go right now. Hey, we knew we were going to see an exciting match. I was excited about this. I, I, I hated that Don Tyson had a bye in the first round because I wanted to watch him play more, honestly. <laughs> but, right. yeah, this technically is round two, even though this is their first match. So uh, just excited to see this high-level gameplay. I, I absolutely love it. Yep, and, and typical for Don Tyson. They've got early boots on four of their five champions. Oh, here we go. Hecarim's yep. coming Hecarim's in. Hecarim's trying to get in on that back line right there, Wu Pao. He went straight yeah. for that Bygar. Very, very smart move. But both teams do, do such a good job. Okay, there's probably going to be another fight over this Drake right here. Yeah, I don't think not over. I don't, I don't know. East Side's, so. East Side's giving it up. I think they're, they're going to back off on it. this. Yeah, I don't think they want in there. And it, yeah. If Hecarim has the smite, he pretty much has a lockdown anyway. So, And here they're going to race down here to this bottom lane and see if they can't pick up something else off of it. Night, there you got the... Got the control, our crowd control right there coming out from Seraphine. They didn't capitalize on it, but they got the shove back. 
that's going to be a hard one to, to do something with. That Karma shield is so strong. She's got a good heal. She has a good root. Uh, you know, Karma is just a really good champion. Like I said, their their support player plays a really nice Karma anyways. So here's oh, a wrap down from Hecarim. Yep. Oof, just too, nice. too many people there. Yep, nice job by him wrapping around and coming back to help his bottom lane out there, though, because I really thought they are going to push in with Kane there. Oh, yeah. The pressure on the bottom lane is going to be key at this point. I do believe so. I think um, Laugh Wizard has got, got his hands full, but he's taking care of it in the top lane. Yeah, you see Karma here waiting in the bush. I don't think they know she's there. Yeah. Here comes the root. Oh, just good flash. That saved her life right there. Yes, if did. didn't flash last, she was dead. That root was just a second from going off. Man, that was some nice patience waiting that out right there, too, and it almost paid off. Oh, yeah, you'd have heard my keyboard. I'd have smashed every key trying to go away from that one. <laughs> yes, you would have. Yes, you would have. <laughs> That's what's crazy. These guys have so much discipline playing this game. And... Oh, here we oh, go. Man, man. This, yeah, yeah, this bottom lane is where the action is at, fellas. Man, this Hector oh, coming in. Nice in. job. Down, nice oh, job. And, oh, he's going to oh, save his. Oh, he's wow. going to save Seraphine. Oh. Yeah, Seraphine, Mocha. Getting away with, um, getting oh, away with something. Big. I'm just gonna that's, go ahead and say, big. uh, Hecarim Diff right there, baby, because he just he just got the gank and saved his bottom laner. Man, yep, I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, that's that's gonna be the play. They're gonna play around this volley in this Hecarim, and, and Seraphine and Zillion are, are eventually just gonna look to those two guys. Hey, we got a gank but, coming down the top lane on the Laugh Wizard, though. Let's see what he can do here. He's gonna have to, yeah, he's gonna have to get out of that, but hey. There, there's my there's my guy right there. There's my top laner, Chuck. <laughs> he likes that little thumbs up. He likes to be a little cheeky when they come in after him. He's like, no, not today, guys. <laughs> hey, he, he just, you know, I, I'm pretty sure if you or I were playing that top lane, Chuck, we, we would have went down right there. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Of course, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be in this match, but <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. But that's a, like I said, you got two brutes basically slugging it out up there, and I and I just I love that. So always fun to watch. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they're coach, gonna get catamatics in the middle lane like here. To, sure enough, they like to have fun in comms. It makes me want to hear their comms. <laughs> Draven's going to get this here too. Nice job by the Draven pushing in there, just pushing the issue. Man, we got action all over the map, guys. This is Hecarim coming in here again. Minutes in, Man, are picking up pace. Yeah, Hecarim almost gets that one at the Zillion backing him up there. I think they're just going to go ahead and be content though to get this Rift Herald. I, I know I would be. Yeah, I mean it'd be a it'd be a big one. Right man, now, they don't league. they don't know they're backing. Man, they could, that was free for them right there. I mean, I know they yeah. can't see what we can see, but all three people in the mid lane just just backed for east side. That is completely free rift herald right there. A lot of pressure in the bottom. Uh, yeah. Don Tyson's got a couple towers. I'm really feeling the pressure right now. The top and the bottom. There yeah, it, it looks like <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Both teams are kind of taking a different approach here. I see that Vazilian has an early uh, battle song, Mythic. Uh, Hecarim has, uh, what's he got, a chem tank? So so they're moving. That, those both abilities or both of those items have movement speed. And then on the other side, you have an Everfrost on the Vagar <clears throat> and a Gauntlet for the Cho'Gath, which provides slows. So it's kind of interesting how they're building. One's building movement speed, one's building for slows. So... Yeah, I'm kind of trying to figure out which one is going to weigh out here in the end. Yeah, you're right there, Wipow. They definitely are building movement speed. So, you know, this Don Tyson team, though, uh, it's almost like they have to get down uh, a little bit before they can uh, really play. I mean, we've sure. seen them several times in, in predicaments where we thought, boy, I don't know if they're going to make it out of this. And then they turn nothing into something. Uh, it just They just play yeah. so well yeah. together. It, it makes you think that they're just kind of seeing what they can get away with and what they can't. And then when they get it all figured out, then they, then they bring it. I agree. Yeah. I, I would not doubt that one bit, Chuck, because that is exactly how they play a lot of times. They just, they're just they just kind of limit testing the other team. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah, we I do will, this? Can I push I, here? I will say it's a smart choice on the Cho'Gath in the top lane because that's it's, it's a tough champion for – Volley bear to kill. It's a tough enemy to kill in general. 
So, you know, it's really going to keep him busy in the top lane for sure. Man, Ekram is Big battle down super here. aggressive and volleys down here with him, though. So here we, here we go. go. Here we time. go. Yeah, yep. It's going to be a big one. Man, and Cho'Gath comes down, too. So we got everybody down here. Oh, Don Tyson should come ahead on this one, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see him sliding back. Nice again. job there. Victor's in pursuit on the Vigar. Let's see if he can get him. I don't think he's going no, to. No. Raven's going to come up here. He's going to have to be careful. He's a little deep. Okay. Yep. Good, good use oh, nice really good flash. flash. Really nice start. flash right. there by Catamatix. But, it but sets now that team leaves up. the dragon open. Oh, yeah. yeah. Drake, Drake's done. Yeah, while really they were right. chasing him around, you know, he just he basically just kited those two. Uh, that That's was great, super great smart team play. play. Yeah, 1,000 IQ play there by Don Tyson. Yep, that really helped. I know. I know. Victor's already got some uh, some some boots uh, built, and it looks like I think he's going to go Ludens here. So I think Victor's going back right now to pick up that Ludens right now. So that is a huge, huge damage uh, increase for him. Oh, I was wrong. Go no, with Leon go Lee Andrews. Yeah. Hey, he's going for that burn damage there. And smart. I mean, that's going to cut through some of the heals that he knows is, is building by that eclipse from the Draven. Um, I'm sure Kane's going to build some of that as well. So that's that's good pickup. Good smart pickup. Yeah, and on, on uh, east side there, look at all the magic resists that they're running over there too. So they're they're really trying to circumvent that. And, and that's smart build because I mean that's that's for the champions or or AP champions. You know, uh, Volley, Victor, Seraphine, Zillion are all AP champions. So that's smart. Yeah, and don't forget too this Vigar man. It you know the longer the game goes, the stronger he gets, oh, and it, it gets crazy in late game with him. It does, and he's doing a really good job of, of CS. His CS is neck and neck with the Victor right now. Uh, top lane, Cho'Goth has done a really good job keeping up with Laugh Wizard. They've just been trading back and forth, and it's it's been like I said, Cho'Goth is just going to keep Laugh Wizard busy, and he's he's going to be able to do a really good job of that. Yeah, you're right. You're right on the Cho'Gath there because he is so hard to kill. He's so tanky, and, and that's how he's building, especially with the uh, what's he got? Frostfire Gauntlets there. I mean, it's yep. just uh, it's going to be almost impossible to take him down one on one. So they're they're building up for a fight here, guys. They're, oh yeah. They're just you know, somewhere, mid lane, a river somewhere. I see some, some pings going out right now. They're, they're going to set up somewhere, but this cane is just is not leaving the top lane alone. They know that no, tower's almost dead. Yeah, and their volley cannot escape that. That's too much damage. Yep, nice job by the jungler circling around on that because he came right back to what he wanted and they got it that time. Yeah, their, their tower pressure early is, is really helping them right now. Uh, you know, bottom lane, top lane, both are going to get pushed out to that, that second tier towers. Yeah, they really got pressure uh, uh, just uh, all across the rift here now with, with having those towers down. So nice job by the cane recognizing that and coming in and getting that top tower too because that means top and bot is is both being pressured now and it's it's harder to cover those and they know they just use their teleport so there's really no way they can be able to react uh, really quick to either one of those. Yeah, and, and East Side did a really good job too. When they cleared the towers, they went ahead and put some vision down in the jungle, so they've even got access into those uh, upper and lower jungle sections to, to kind of put even more pressure on and have more map mobility. Yeah, I kind of feel like both teams are kind of content to just farm here for a few minutes and, and maybe get another item online, or maybe, you know, they're just going to set up because they know Drake's coming up here in just about a minute. Yeah, the Drake's up right now. Uh, there's the Baron's up in the pit, so I expect something to happen pretty soon around one of those two uh, objectives. Yeah, we got Victor now here in the top lane, and we got the Volley Bear in the bottom lane, and man, they're coming. They're going to send uh, three in here on the Volley again. They're going to try to get him out of this bottom lane, and yeah, I think they will. He can't, he's not going to escape that, man. Yeah, okay, tower good job here good by trade. Yep. Good, good say, trade right there. 
I like that. If you're going to do it to us, we're going to do it to you. And so I think they end up getting this tower out of this, too. Yeah, they're going to get it and have time to get out of there, too, before they get rotated on, too. That's really good play. Oh, he's going to have, Hecarim's going to have to watch Whoa. out. He just ran right into that whoop yeah, out. Oh, man, he just, I, I guarantee oh, he was job. thinking. Good zillion ult. Yeah, I think he was thinking uh, Dragon Vision there, and, man, he just turned the corner and ran right into that. Absolutely, but a good zillion ult uh, brings him right back in where they may be yeah. able to, they, they're going to contest this a little bit. Or at least just be, they would push him off and be content with that too. That's Yeah, if they can just clear some vision and maybe get some vision here, let Volley get back in. Uh, Don Tyson's really good about making the safe play too. They won't push near as hard as I will. They don't, they're not the dive comp that I am. <laughs> Hey, we got Volley just coming right in here. He's going to initiate this fight. Ekram's coming in, too. Man, they are going at it. They want this Drake. So, so trade right now, but I think East Side's ahead on this one. They just. Oh, I agree. Oh, okay. oh I don't I mean, know. It's right, kind of turning Victor's around. Yeah, Anybody I know. The game? They, they got this bottom pulled off. They got Draven there, kind of where Ooh. they want him. Nice job. Now numbers in Don Tyson's favor. It's 2-2 two, two right now, guys, and, and Eastside is really low. Volley Bear knows that. He's, he's, he's like, I'm not done yet. Oh, but, oh, but he is done. <laughs> so it's too much CC, guys. Too yep. much CC. Man, uh, I think he thought he could just bail in there on that Vigar maybe, and he just, just couldn't quite get to him. I think I think he was thinking he can ult on top of all three of them, which would have been great, but you've got, you know, Vigar stun, Cho'Goth stun, or knock up, <coughs> excuse me, and Karma stun, that's, that's just too much. Yeah, real nice job by that Seraphine coming in on the bottom too and helps setting up that Draven kill. I said we talked about them having so much CC with basically having two supports. Uh, that really came into play in that fight. Yeah, it really did. And they're going to be, they're going to have to do that uh, some more. I think their team fight ability is probably a little bit better uh, than East side, but you know, in a game like this, it's, it's whoever gets the early pick. Yeah, and Eastside's going to get the dragon out of it. Yeah, it's all situational numbers game, and if, if you go in and you lose one first, it's hard to come back from that. Yeah, and I, I, yeah heard, it is. I heard someone talking about it on a stream today, and they, they really said, you know, League's not listed as a turn-based game, but it really is. Uh, once you make your play, use your abilities, use your ultimates, you know, it's up to the other team to react to you. And so in in that situation and with that thought, it really is turn-based a lot of times. Oh, absolutely it is. Yeah, it makes it tough. And Never falter. You know, something else I just noticed, looked like the Seraphine finished up a Moonstone. So that's going to offer a little more healing for her abilities. So that's why I really think that they're going to use those two Basically, it's like you said before, two supports to push the other three kind of help out uh, team fights. It looks like this Vigar is working on Rabadons, and if he is, that's going to be scary when he gets that completed. Yeah, he's already got one large rod, so he's not too far from it now. Yeah, I said, and he just gets stronger and stronger as the game goes, so to me, that's scary. Yeah, and he's he's not had a death yet, which is surprising because Vagar is typically a pretty easy champion to kill. But uh, his team, you know, with, with Kane and Cho'Goth and, and Karm and Draven surrounding him, it, it's it, you know if they provide a pocket for him to just to just sit there and yeah. bail on people, it's going to be tough. And, and you know these, these students, they're used to playing together, so I'm sure Vagar right now feels really comfortable. Teammates um, breaking it up for him. Absolutely. Yeah, and Eastside's going to come down here and get in, get in Don Tyson's jungle, too. So, he may be setting up a little trap play right here. Oh, they may wait for somebody to walk through there. I do not want to be the champion that walks through that jungle right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they know Baron's going to be important for Don Tyson. So There's a good chance somebody's going to, nope, I'm going to break it up and go ahead and go into Baron. Now Don Tyson's collapsing on him. Yeah, they're going to poke in there and hopefully try to disrupt that if they can. So much damage output. All right, here we go, guys. We're going to be a fight with that Seraphine. Okay. 
Man, nice oh job by God. Volley coming oh on the back God. line there, but he's like 3v1 <laughs> right now. Yeah, no. There's... Peckham did a good job he with the back line. Yeah, he did. Piece, yeah. He's going to get ultimated there by the cane, but man, they are really swapping back and forth here. You know, I can I think totally it's, sympathize it's, with him jumping on Vigar like that, though. You know, if, if the other team would have been there, whatever Lap Wizard jumped in, I think that would they could have wiped uh, East Side pretty easily. But the Vagar did a good job coming down and, and you know dropping his E and kind of keeping the rest of the team away from the to Lap Wizard until they could kill the Volley Bear. Nice job getting the cane pushed out there, man. They did that great as a team. They they peeled him together. Yeah, that's not easy to do. That's especially a, that champion. Well, they stopped the Baron, and that was the main goal here. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. I think they're going to... There's going to be some continual fights around that pit. Woo, Seraphine, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> she just about got caught out by Jogar. <laughs> you're, you're right. It couldn't be any closer than that. Wow. Yeah, both, both teams really wanting that, that Baron as soon as possible. Yeah, and look how close they still are on gold, even at this point. 12 to 11, 44K, 45K. I mean, oh, just really? amazing it's to me. Yeah. Except for the tower pressure. And even that's not too far out of... Oh, it's, it's two and two. It's, it's it's dead even as well. Yeah, but that top lane, that that second tower, they're going to have to guard it or it will fall. Yeah, and it's, it's being pushed into right now, actually. Oh, yeah. So, yeah something to note here, guys, is Hecram just finished his fourth item, and it was a Death's Dance. So that's going to make him even harder to kill, and he's going to put out even more damage. And he's already 5, 1, and 4. So uh, I really like that build choice by Hecram. I think Don Tyson yeah. kind of noticed earlier that uh, Hecram's going to be the one to play around. So Volley Bear's kind of switched it up a little bit, went a little more tanky, picked up tank boots, picked up another tank item there. Uh, so I, I, I really, really like what they're doing here. Yeah, and Cho'Gath, man, he's he's building so tanky. He's building like raid boss Cho'Gath build, man. Look at that with the Frostfire, <laughs> Gargoyle, Stoneplate. I mean, anti-magic, uh, you know, uh, anti-everything, man. He, he is really going to be a super tank at towards the end of And there you go with the Vigar. Yep. Look at that, like two-shot delete. Yep, you get caught Man, in that uh, circle of death, world. and you're done. Yes. And that circle comes up out of nowhere, right on top of you. Yeah, and the bad thing is, and it's it's hard for me, especially as a low-level player, to not touch the outside of it. And your oh, instinct man. is just to try to run and get out of there because you're trapped. And if you touch the side, then you're stunned. My yeah, poor Tristana always thinks she can jump out of it. And that's not the case. No, no. Right, I'm not sure they're going to be able to contest this. Uh, no. I think they're just going to have to give it. I think they're just going to have to play defense off of this. There's just not enough of them up there to do anything about it. Nice yeah, dodge tough. by the Seraphine there. Man, if Seraphine didn't dodge that, I think Seraphine just got deleted. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna pressure this guys. They have they can clear this Baron buff if they can push in. Yes. Yeah, it's just Baron's good. Been good easier to take on. Them after. Man, Laugh Wizard's doing a great job of jumping there on the squishies is. in the back line, and I mean Hecram's doing it too. But they're both of them together are just yeah, man, they're going done. straight to that back line every single time. They're man, pushing. Look at this dive, man. man. Going. Nice yeah, job. That was the play. Now they only have. Two enemies with Baron buff. That's something they think can control. And now, now both of those have to protect top, so the top don't get pushed in. So that Baron buff is going to do little to nothing for East Side. Yeah, yeah, that actually was was a smart play. Wait until they get done with Baron, and then get them when they start breaking off. Man, what and is that movement down. speed on Hecram too? Man, he looked like he was just uh, coming around the uh, third corner in the Kentucky Derby there after that tower dive. <laughs> man, wow. That's the thing, man. Hecarim, you know, that's why he built those cooldown boots. He can spam those abilities and just, you're going to have a really hard time outrunning this guy. But I, I was watching him move but there and I was thinking, that that doesn't even look like it, it, it's in real time. I mean, he was moving so <laughs> fast. 
And now Don Tyson is ahead in the um, gold count for the first time since the beginning of the match. We've got uh, three kills in Don Tyson's favor and a Drake. I think Don Tyson's looking better than they have all game. I'm telling you, when you think they're down and you kind of think things aren't going their way, they they are resilient. I said it before in a, a, another match that we streamed, man, they should be, you know, team resilience, team 12-minute mythics, whatever, but they they do not give up. I've said it before, too, that, you know, I think if they were down by 30, they still wouldn't give up. They'd still think they could win, so they, it's well, a super they resilient the team. Game. Yeah. They, they played the long game. Everybody wants that uh, FF, Man, that nice job by Hecarim there, backlining again. Yep. Absolutely. They're gonna mop up both there, and here comes the volley ultimate on top of that on tower. Man, they are they are going to town right now. And it's completely ran Draven out of there. So yeah. After the Vigar, like Victor get gets the Vigar. Nice job. Nice pick. Yeah. Excellent and that goes team back play. To the team team fights going toward Don Tyson. He said that at the beginning and and that's held true. Yeah, and now the Hecarim, you know, he's built up now he's he's Fully got the item, the mirror man is done. So that's even more damage he's gonna be able to crank out. Uh, gosh, I'm telling you guys, Don Tyson's gonna have a <laughs> their their team fight ability is crazy. Seraphine's building the stack of flowing water, she's gonna really gonna try to just pump out the heels, keep everybody up and alive. Uh, it's Joe Gat's doing everything he can to keep him from taking down the inhibitor, but that inhibitor is gonna come down if Don Tyson has anything to say about it. Well, the thing is that Chogath is built so tanky that he, he survived, but he literally can't kill any of them. I mean, he is well, all tank yeah. items, so when his team's down, he's just kind of forced to yeah. walk around and just kind of hang out. Yeah, that, that's what's smart about Don Tyson. When they go into team fights, they basically just ignore the Chogath. They just go around him, they kill everybody else, and if he's left, fine. If he's not, let him go back to base. You know, they're, they're really not too worried about him at this point. Yeah, because he's nothing but a you know a damage sponge, and you can't afford to put your damage into him. There. No, that's right. You know, in victory now he built the Leon Reach, which I like, and then he went with a cosmic drive to pump out even more damage. And you know, now he's got that magic penetration. Uh, that victory is going to start laying waste, and we've got three members of Don Tyson with with bounties now. So, oh, another engage by Laugh Wizard. Oh, man, and Raven is deleted. Is that is that how you uh, face check the bush there? <laughs> Just throw an ultimate on the bush and be done with it. Wow, what a play! I, I, I'm holding my t-shirt up over here once again because that, my friends, is how you face check a bush in League of Legends. <laughs> it looks like we got though a uh, little disconnect issue for East Side. Hopefully they can get that resolved pretty quick. Okay, it is his son. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. It looks like Don Tyson's going to the Drake. Is this the equivalent of Ice and the Punter? Man, I don't know. They said, <laughs> yeah. they said their power just went out. Is what I just saw in the chat. So uh, oh, I hope they no. can. I hope they can get back online and, and get back in the game. I I want to see uh, see some more of this action that we've got going here. Yeah, let's kick those generators up and get those hamsters on the wheels mm. yeah, and, I, and I hope everything's okay there I don't know if they're having a storm or if it's just a power outage I'm not exactly sure where they're located at so yeah hopefully they can get that back up and running pretty soon I hope sure enough you know something I didn't notice earlier though while we got a little break here is you talked about that Hecker really chasing them down you know he has the cooldown boots, as I mentioned, he already has natural speed. His abilities provide speed. And then he took Ghost as well. So he is really looking to chase people down. Yeah, I saw that in a match, like I said earlier today, where the Hecarim uh, built real mobility, uh, a little more tanky than he's building. But the Death Dance helped out a lot with that. And, and he did exactly what they're doing. You know, he's going to just force his way through that back line. He's going to pick on the squishies, and he's just saying, you know what? I'm coming through, and there's nothing you can do about it. They've got Absolutely. a wind advisory over there at um, East Side Preparatory, but I don't see anything in the area that's going to cause the power outage. It may just be unfortunate luck. 
and sadly as we all know with electronics it could be a little bit of anything so yeah that's true I, I hope they can get back online here though I, I really don't want the match to end uh, with this uh, kind of leaving us on a cliffhanger here I feel like we're, we're about to go to you know season two or something on, on a show we're watching because <laughs> man it's, it, it was just getting uh, really heated in here right before they disconnected. So to all these players are just super, super talented. I, I love that this is where eSports is heading across the United States and in the world too, but uh, we're watching this, you know, play versus cup and watching the state champions go head to head with each other is just it's phenomenal. I love it. Uh, like I said, I, I can root for Don Tyson. I'm going to root for the state of Arkansas, of course. But, man, just, just all these kids are just so talented. It's just almost unbelievable to me to be sitting back and watching this uh, after being at LAN parties and, and seeing other people compete, you know, 20 years ago. Or 20-plus years, I guess, Chuck. I'm, I'm probably a little older than I think I am, but... Uh, and knowing that something like this was a possibility, you know, I mean, we didn't have the internet speed then, but with the land parties, you know, you knew that this type of competition could be possible. And just to see it come to fruition, it just makes me so happy that, that these kids get this opportunity. Yeah. And me just checking the weather again. Um, it looks like if I'm correct on which East side preparatory school we're playing, it, it does look like they do have a 45 mile an hour wind advisory which i mean could bring down some lines or something so i know uh earlier this week texas was having problems with uh power grid so i, I didn't know if maybe it was something like that because of all the extreme heat that they've had out west too i'm not ex not sure their exact location um kirkland washington right outside of seattle i do believe is correct oh okay cool Hey, we have one player reconnecting here, it looks like. Oh, that's a good sign. Yeah, so may, maybe they can get back online. I, it, it just said a player reconnected, so I think we're just missing one now. Uh, I, I wonder they, what all kind of... You kinda... think they got a plan? You think you think Ryan <laughs> Tyson's talking about how they're going to take this Drake? Man, you... you... Think... Eastside Preparatories talking about how they're going to get this when that guy gets back on. I was just, I mean, that's what I was just about to say, Chuck. We're on the same exact wavelength. I was like, uh, how much talking do you think has been going on in, in this pause right here about what we're going to do when the pause button gets in again? <laughs> well, uh, that's, and he's, he's right about the, the Drake there. I mean, you can look here at the mini map and see that Don Tyson is ready to go. And east side is down their ADC, so I'm not sure how much fight they're going to be able to put up on that one. Yeah, yeah. See, the unfortunate thing is that three minute delay. We'll get back, you know, but they know what happened three minutes, and we're now ten minutes into the pause, so they can see exactly where Don Tyson is. Yeah, but with five, what we've got five thousand, almost six thousand health here left on the the Drake, and man, they, they can burn that down in probably three seconds or so. Oh yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, mean I, it, but it does have an effect. It it will have an effect. Oh yeah, and I like how you got Zillion up there already. That's that's going to be uh, trying to circumvent anyone from coming through that choke point uh, to get to the Drake. So. Yeah, almost there, and they replied almost. So. All right. Oh, I, I, I can calm down a little bit now, Chuck. Uh, Woo pal, because I was thinking, oh, man, worst case scenario, they they have to pull the plug here. But, man, like I said, I, I want to see how this ends. This this is too good for us to get cut out right here. Yeah, it looks like Widget just reconnected, so that should be both players back on. Hopefully they can get things straightened out. If you want to continue the game, go ahead and donate now. <laughs> <laughs> I want, you say that, Chuck. Please insert another quarter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll continue the game as soon as we get um, a few more callers from our sponsors. 
<laughs> it's a it's it's a it's a drive. It's a PBS drive here. <laughs> Just five more callers, and we'll bring you back to your programming. Hey, they're asking if if they're already here, so they're they're communicating back and forth here. So I I figure we're gonna get get back in action here pretty quick. I would think. You know, hey, you mentioned here earlier about, oh, never mind, here we go, yep. And it looks like Dragon is going to be free. There's just nothing they can do about that at that point in time. No. That's going to get them is four. Tech -tech. Yeah, that's that's a nice buff for them, too. Provides even more mobility for them. Yeah, we got a little bit of lag spike here. I probably expected that we would with them being paused for that long, so... We'll see if we catch yeah. up here real quick. Yeah, here we go. They're going to go ahead and push on in that jungle there. Really smart move by them doing that too. Go ahead and take that jungle while they're there. Yep, we got a minute for that Baron. <laughs> you know that um, Eastside's wanting to, to recapture that Baron that they lost a few minutes ago. Yeah, I know. I talked about the victor play before the game, too, from Catamatics here, and he's 3-1-8. That just tells me he's not dying. He's not hurting his team. He's involved in the fights. Like I said, he, he is just a steady uh, victor player. I said he, yeah, he, he's, yeah. not, he's not flashy. He's not, oh, I'm going to take over the entire game. But, man, he just solid, solid play out of that victor. Yeah, and Victor's also yeah. a champion too. That after you know, you give Victor a little bit of time to build some items, and, and the damage that he can output is is very gross. So, uh, you know, he's already got four completed items. Um, I'm sure he's got a pretty good gold bank right now because he's farming extremely well. Uh, so that Victor is going to come online even more uh, in the few minutes to come. And we got three of Don Tyson's with 400 plus bounties. Uh, the gold has swung way into Don Tyson's favor now. Of course, they're up two drakes. And man, they they have really taken Cho'Gath out of the game. You just see Hecarim come in there and just take jungle right in front of him, kind of like, what are you going to do about it? Whatever. Buddy? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Man, and what? Volley Bear's jumping in here with the yeah, ultimate, what? but I don't know if anyone's going to be up here to, to help him. Yeah, they're... they're no, that's... no. Looked like that was a little premature. Team that's wouldn't like quite the place yet. Too. Yeah, that's unlike them. Usually they they get all their ducks in a row before jumping in like that. Yeah. Man, here but comes no, Hecker on the back line, line though. Oh, oh man, wow! Right over the wall, right up the gut, man. Yep, that. What that a heartbreaker right there! there. Nice yep. job. He can clean yep, up and a they're ignoring that Chogath, oh, like hey, there's to everybody, and then Chogath. And they can't the run from him. No, no, there, there's oh, no escape with oh. these guys. There's no running from him because he's too yeah, fast. No. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't Jones think about it earlier. No, and that I mean, gives them that, that bounty there, yeah. So yeah, they're going to better clear that bear and easily. Nice job by the jungler there from Don Tyson. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to see if we can get him in the draft portal, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely what we expected. Um, Don Tyson coming in the late game, showing them that they're here for the long haul. Um, that's what we've seen the whole time in the Arkansas State Tournament. So, um, no surprises here. I think this played out pretty much as we was expecting it. I hate to talk too soon, though. But, I mean, I think we pretty much called this before the game. Um, unfortunately, because of technical difficulties, not everybody heard that. But... Well, and I'll tell you something else, guys, is this victor, you know, that Baron and him him getting some kills in that, that thing, or that last battle there, he now has two large rods, so Rabadons is going to be really close, and that's a major damage increase whenever he picks up that Rabadons. Yeah, and he almost has as many assists as the support players do. I mean, the support, is they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I mean, 2, 3, and 15, 2, 4, and 18. I mean, right. bravo is all I gotta say because your support's doing exactly what they're supposed to do, and even that oh, you know that extra ADC is KDR another is great. Uh, support. So, just yep. excellent all around gameplay. 
And yeah, at this point, you know, like we mentioned earlier, that, that uh, okay, here we go, maybe an engagement again, this Hecarim is really wanting to get back in the mix. Vygar's ring there, stalling them. Yeah, I think they're kind of just waiting on this uh, minion yeah, push to get here, here, but... Yeah. There's that going in, in, guys. And Hecarim uh, and, yeah. and Volley and both like, busting out oh, the oh, ultimates. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, that was wow. Wow. That was the timing that we was looking for Don Tyson in that last spot. Perfect, yep. perfect execution. And there you go. That's, that's GG right there, guys. I, I believe GGs. so. Yeah. Awesome game, Don Tyson. Good job, Mr. Uh, Coach um, Sniff there. Perfect, perfect game. Just what we expected. I you know, mean, and it's, it's not your traditional draft, guys. You don't have a traditional ADC, but that is, that is just how smart these kids are to know but hey, we can pick up a Seraphine and a Zillion and feed our jungler. Uh, you know, our middle lane is going to take care of business, feed our top lane, and just let them take over. And that Hecarim at 13, 1, and 11, guys, that is impressive. Yeah, two players finishing with a 700 gold bounty, too. Just great gameplay out of the victor. So they really picked on Laugh Wizard there in the beginning, putting pressure on him. Man, they had lane, East Side had lane pressure. Uh, they were looking really good, but Don Tyson. Man, once they once they got that dragon lead, they just turned everything completely around. That's excellent, excellent team gameplay. Yeah, I think it kind of hurt the cane a little bit. Having he knew he had to put some pressure on the top lane, and you can look there at his CS score. You know, he, he's nearly a hundred CS behind uh, the Hecarim, and I think he just had to watch the Laugh Wizard. He had to watch that top lane and kind of babysit it there early, and it kind of put him behind, and he never could really catch back up. Yeah, let's go ahead and continue to the end screen there. That way we can see just a little more breakdown. I'm not sure I'll get that from spectator mode. I can't oh, remember. Hey, uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah I, let to... me say, I think I have to be in game to get it. But maybe not. I can't remember. It's, it's loading here, so we'll see what we get, Chuck. We'll get it, but as we figure that out, we can continue to talk. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, and as we talked about, guys, you know, if it's, uh, you, know, you said it best, you know, Don Tyson sometimes early looks like they're down, and then all of a sudden, one thing changes, one, one team fight occurs, and then it's like the script has been flipped that quickly. I mean, it looks like they may be doing a restart or something here. It's uh, East Phantom showing as being offline, so I wonder if they're all going to do a restart here. Maybe the other team is too, just to make sure uh, there's no issues. You get all or, the bugs in the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, that might be a, a good idea there, actually. Well, guys, Don Tyson representing the state of Arkansas gets that first W. Man, I, they look sharp. Uh, I saw they were looking to uh, scrimmage earlier in the week. Man, I, I don't think they've missed a beat. I think they played exactly like they wanted to. If 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 you're East Side Preparatory, what, what do you what do you do? What, what's your game plan moving forward? Uh, my first uh, game plan moving forward is ban Aatrox. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, Band don't Aatrox. don't let him play <laughs> Aatrox, man. Uh, just don't at all costs. No. Uh, or they, or Draven or Darius or you can't ban him. We, we've already talked. We've been over this, guys. You can't ban the guy. <laughs> no, they're they, I think team comp for them is something they need to look into uh, and trying to play uh, more counters to Don Tyson. They play. They played a really solid game. There. There's. Really nothing wrong with their individual gameplay. The cane looked really good. Uh, they did a nice job ganking lanes and a nice job working together. You know, they had some really nice tower dives there with three players coming in early. Uh, and, you know, Don Tyson kind of turned that around a little bit uh, on them. Oh, we do have the, the advanced details here, Chuck. Nice. So, um, good deal. 
so I, I don't think there's really anything that I saw just specifically from them. Like I said, they, they look solid across the board to me. I, I think Team Comp is really what got them as far as giving Don Tyson advantage later on, and they weren't able to protect that back line. And Don Tyson was just able to fly right in there and, and take out their back line, take out their damage dealers. And, I mean, it, it was GG after that. Yeah, I think the, the, the team fight uh, was, you know, it took Don Tyson a little bit to get online, but once they did, once they got some items built up, uh, their ability to take over the game was just, you know, it kind of out of hand for east side. Uh, I think something they really need to look at is their jungle uh, and their ADC was really uh, kind of held back in that game. They're, they're, they were several levels behind where they should have been. And I think that really kind of hurt them in the long run. So, yeah, I think you're right, Fubi. I think the draft really needs to be different. I don't know exactly how different it needs to be or what they need to choose. Uh, I thought they did a really good job at the beginning, and they just kind of let it slip away there toward toward the middle mid-game. Looks like we're going to have a 10 to 15-minute delay. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to stretch my legs. I'll be right back. Hey, I, I finally now realize why they have television timeouts uh, in these uh, college games that you watch on TV because uh, the people working behind the scenes need a break too. <laughs> man. Absolutely. Uh, we, we're doing these games now, and it, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit. I'm like, man, uh, you do a uh, cast for three or four hours straight like we've done a couple of these, and, man, it, it wears you out. I mean – I'm not used to talking this much, Woo Pal. So for me, it's <laughs> it's it's kind of foreign on that part. But uh, you know, you're you're absolutely right on um, uh, East Side. You know that Draven was really strong early on. Man, he he was pushing up on tower. He was shoving waves. He had a nice CS lead too. Uh, so Don Tyson kind of helped to sh kind of shut him down a little bit once they got out of laning phase, but really they won that bottom lane in laning phase. I mean, hands down, there's no doubt about it. So if they can play around uh, their bottom laner, is obviously very strong and their jungle, um, you know, the top laner did just fine laning against laugh wizard. You know, they, there's really not any just big holes I see in, the, in, in their gameplay it just kind of got away from them towards the end. And, and part of that could be, you know, just scaling. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure on all those champions. Like I said, I know Vigar scales really hard. Uh, I know Hecarim. Uh, he just he stays good from beginning to end. I, I mean, so I don't know the specifics on all of the champions. But, you know, that could have played into it a little bit too. Yeah, I think it did for sure. And I also think that, you know, that while Kane had to babysit top lane, uh, Don Tyson felt comfortable enough saying, you know what, uh, Laugh Wizard can probably take two on one just fine. So it allowed the Hecarim, you know, once bottom lane kind of got behind a little bit, it allowed him to really put pressure on the bottom. Uh, we even seen Volley Bear come bottom a little bit, uh, and Victor as well, to really put pressure on that Karma uh, and that Draven and really push him out of lane. And, and after about the, you know, the 12, 15 minute mark, uh, Karma and Draven really weren't even factors in the game much. Yeah, and I, I'm going to attribute a lot of that to, to Hecarim and his backlining because, man, he, he went straight for Vigar, uh, straight for um, the Draven. Anybody on that backline, buddy, that's that's who he was on top of. And uh, I'm going to guess we're probably going to see a Hecarim ban for the second game. But like you said before, Wupau, you can't ban all their champions out. I mean, you just you got to give them something. But, man... That, that Hecarim definitely, uh, that was great gameplay across the board, uh, but that Hecarim play was really, really solid, really, really nice. It absolutely was. It was very impressive. Uh, and like, you're absolutely right. I fully expect there to be a Hecarim ban uh, within the first three bands of the game for sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Don Tyson responds to that. Like I said, you can't really ban them out, but okay, now if you ban Hecarim, uh, what other jungler are you allowing him to play that he loves to play? You know, And who else are you going to open up the book for and say, okay, you can play your favorite now because you know, banning that is going to open the door for something else. So 
I, I'm really looking forward to seeing their team comp after this and, and see how they choose to play this out. Because I know, I, I guarantee you, they're talking about it right now. Uh, things that they saw in the game, weaknesses, strengths, uh, they're going to try to do whatever they can to get an edge on the other team. And East Side's going to be doing that to Don Tyson, too. They're, hey, you know, what did we do wrong? Hey, we know Bot was strong coming out. You know, what do we need to play for late game with these guys? You know, you just you just never know, and and it could have a complete turnaround. Absolutely, it could. Like you said before, you know these guys are so intelligent, they're so smart. Uh, these student athletes, they'll find a way. They're they're going to talk this over. That's why we're seeing such an extended break here. You know, both teams are kind of talking about strategy right now, and I expect the next game to be uh, just as good, if not better, than the first one. Yeah, the stakes are definitely high. I was, I'm seeing here in the chat that uh, they said because the internet went down, uh, two of the players are going to head home for game two. So uh, apparently they live pretty close. They said it would be a 10 to 15 minute delay. So probably about halfway or a little over halfway through that. So when they get home, they'll play from there just to try to make sure they don't have any connectivity issues in game two. Wow. I don't wow. know if I could do that. I, I know my kids. I don't think I could do that. Hey, like I too said, too much can happen. Too much can happen in the drive home. Hey, <laughs> you're a right, Chuck. But I mean, these kids are like adapt and overcome at all costs, man. I, I, that's it. I'm going home to play where the power hasn't been off, or you know, we're not having issues there. So, uh, kudos to them for doing that. In the car yeah, <laughs> yeah, traffic jam. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. Sending them home like that. But um, hopefully everything will be good. Everybody will be safe. While we're waiting on the pause here, guys, I'm going to step away for just a moment as well. I'll be right back. Hey, no problem. We could probably have a word from our sponsor. Hey, I, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, Chuck, what would you <laughs> like we, to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have our, our wives come on and explain why they're allowing us to do this. Is that yeah? Is that our sponsors? Yeah, maybe that that could be that. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> no, I, I'm glad we're getting to do this. Uh, I'll attribute a, a large part of that to you, Chuck, because you're the one that really pushed for the streaming and pushed for the stream to be better uh, just at school. So, you know. We were streaming, but it wasn't anything like this. And I, I love doing this. Uh, I love doing the play-by-play, -play. man. It's just, it's just, it's just fun to get on here with you guys and talk about the game and highlight these kids. I mean, they've worked hard to get here. So, uh, all these kids have worked super hard by the time we get to this point uh, in the tournament. And I'm just glad that we can stream them and and highlight what they're doing. I mean, it it, it just makes oh, me happy. It's it's definitely fun. I've always enjoyed audio visual and and stuff. I, I can't wait until next year. Maybe I'll get some time to sit down and actually work on some graphics for these games and, and different things just to make it a little bit better. But I really enjoy the production side. It actually kills me that you're having to stream from the streaming computer over at your house just because of logistics today. But um, I really like working behind the scenes. Uh, not not so much on the knowledge you and Wu Pao have of this game, but yeah, I, I like streaming and I like and I really love um, supporting the kids. Yeah, uh, Chuck's absolutely right on that. I'm having to what we call drive today. Um, he just can't make it home in time for these four o'clock start times. Like I said, complete logistics. Uh, it goes much better, uh, much smoother. It looks prettier. Uh, when Chuck's driving, like you said, with the graphics, um, uh, I try. At least he, keep, at least he's on here to keep me straightened out because uh, he has to tell me, uh, "Hey, you need to, to go over there and and click this uh, uh, one button for us, and, and everything will be okay." So uh, I appreciate you doing that, Chuck. Like I said I appreciate you just y'all doing the stream together with us, man. I, it's it's a blast, but you know, it's our time. But it's a way that we can highlight and help these kids and really push esports. And that's what we're all about. We're, we're all about esports getting bigger, growing. And it is by leaps and bounds. But this is one way that we can contribute 
especially for the state of Arkansas, and I'm proud for that. You know, we're, we're kind of representing the whole state here by doing this, and I love it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Coach Sniff keeping it straight. I know Adam Hand over at um, Pocahontas keeps it straight. So many other coaches kind of support us and help us do what we do because if they wouldn't allow us to stream, then we streaming. If, if they told us no, we would – we wouldn't do it, so I appreciate them supporting us and what we love to do and supporting these kids. So it's kind of a, you scratch my back and we'll continue to scratch yours, and I really appreciate it because I know there's a lot of options and a lot of different things these coaches can be doing. So they put their trust and their, their reputation on the line by having us talk in front of their games and stuff. So I do appreciate that a lot. Yeah, and I, all the coaches, you know, from Coach Moore to uh, Coach Coates that we've had on the stream, I said, I really appreciate them letting us do this. Uh, I think whenever we first kind of threw it out there and said, hey, we'll, we'll stream for you, they're kind of like, huh? Well, what are you guys talking about? And But, of course, they didn't know that we've been working on this for, what, over a year now, I think, that we first kind of had this idea of, you know, hey, we need to stream these games and put these kids out here and, and let everybody see, you know, yeah. uh, what yeah, they're doing, you know. And, and, yeah, well – you know, really, because we're all coaches, you know, and it's not just our kids that we're coaching. You know, we want to help everybody out. Yeah, and you know, really, Chuck, we're ma- we're making an archive of this too, and that was one thing that I that I wanted to see is you know these matches from the past or the you know first couple of years of esports in Arkansas. We d- we know who won, but we don't have necessarily have video of it. And I want us to be able to go back and you know watch these matches one day or. These kids will be able to go back and say, "Hey, look, look what I did in high school whenever I was playing for the varsity esports team." You know, and, and they'll actually I've have got, footage of it online. That's just awesome. Yeah, yeah, I've got all my old VHSs of my my football days, and I think one of my fellow classmates actually put some of them up on YouTube. And so, so yeah, I mean, twenty twenty five years later, these kids are going to want to want to see, watch these, and remember. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, I remember so and so Johnny being so good at that, and this was an excellent game. Kids, watch this. That was your dad there. Yeah, and I agree. And uh, something that you've highlighted before that uh, that's great for these kids is, you know, if they want to play league together after they graduate, or you know, if. 15 years from now, they still like gaming together. They can still do it. So they can still have that interaction and still have that friendship and that bond together uh, even after their high school career or even if they play at the collegiate level. You know, they can still keep playing. To to me, the, the games like this is kind of the new golf. You know, you, you just keep playing with your buddies for as long as you want to. Absolutely, yeah. It's something that it's a lifelong hobby, etc. I mean, I know Coach Sniff was saying that he he enjoyed playing league, and that's what got him involved in any esports that he get involved in because he just lo- had a love for the game. And yeah, I mean, he I'm sure he still plays it. He's probably like us. I mean, we play with our students. I'm sure he plays with his students when they need to fill in. It's fun. <laughs> It would, it would be pretty intimidating play with this team, though, Chuck. I mean, it's no, intimidating no, play with our team. No, I would not fill in against Don Tyson, no. <laughs> me, me and you, yeah. I would not fare well. No, <laughs> I, I don't think we would. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think we would fare very well at all, no. I, I know we wouldn't, uh, but I love yeah. I love watching these kids play it. I said it's just, it's just fun. Coach saying he plays with them a lot, yeah. I, I, I believe it. I could tell when he was on here talking that he – he just absolutely loves the, the, the whole environment. Yeah. And we should be getting uh, back up and running here pretty soon. I see East Phantom is back online again, so not sure exactly how much longer we'll have on this break, but we'll get back up and rolling and get this game number two going. I can't, I can't wait to see him play, Chuck. I, I just I love this high-level play. I love how much action there is. I love the teamwork and how they – the synergies they have with these champions, man. It's just it's just amazing, though. Sometimes when we're watching this, like I said, I, I can't commentate it fast enough because I can't talk that fast. There's so much going on. Uh, man, it just blows me away sometimes to watch their gameplay and how they play this game. Absolutely. 
you know, thinking about playing and stuff and playing with your, you know, playing with these kids and the school kids and playing with, you know, my son started playing the same time that I did, but um, I can't play with him anymore. Not unless there's a big group to carry me. <laughs> It'd just be like, no, dad, stop. Just, just log off. Yeah, they they take it to a whole new level. Like I said, this game, to me, uh, it, it has such a large learning curve. You have to really be dedicated to just even get started in the game, much less playing it at this high of a level. I mean, it, it's amazing to me. I mean, I, I've never played a game with such a high learning curve before, and that's part of what makes it addictive is you, you want to get better at it, but at the same time, you – you realize everyone's so far ahead of you too that you're like, I- I'll never be able to play on that level. You know, I'm, but, but I'm not never going to be a diamond level player. You know, but it, it's but, still but not fun. everyone because you know a large percentage of the people don't even play it. So you're better than those that never tried. Oh uh, yeah, I guess if you look at it that way, that's true. But I said it's just it's just amazing to me that these are kids. I said they they play at such a high level, it, it just blows me away. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more of uh, the Laugh Wizard uh, Cat of Mice. I'm, I'm really kind of curious to see if they get a Nautilus in this match. Uh, I, we didn't get to watch the bands. Uh, I'm sure that was probably banned out, but, man, the, the support for Don Tyson plays so well. And we saw it in this game, too, that, you know, both players playing support champions in that bottom lane. And, man, they just did exactly what they needed to do. You know, they – they did crowd control, and they didn't die. And that's the, one of the biggest things with support, you know. How do you get in there and feel, you know, you're, you're kind of taking a risk there uh, and being involved with team fights, but not dying. It's, it's not easy. And they just make it look like, you know, well, this is what you're supposed to do. Uh, it is, like I said, their gameplay blows me away. Absolutely. We'll get started back here. It looks like um, next game, Don Tyson will be in the red in the upper right corner, and um, Eastside Preparatory School will be blue in the bottom left corner. Yes, that'll be easier for me, Chuck, because Don Tyson's school color is the red phoenix, so it always makes more sense to me when they're on the red side. But uh, <laughs> like I said, once again, Chuck has to keep everybody lined out here because I'll end up calling it wrong uh, because I get so caught up in everything else. So I, I'm, I really I can't wait for them, them to get started and to see this match in action. Uh, it's going to be – uh, another high action uh, game. I'm I'm sure high of octane. it. Yeah, high octane, man. It I, it couldn't get much better than that game. But I think we say that about every time that we watch them play. Of man, mm-hmm. it couldn't have got any closer than that. You think they? Um, you think they're gonna they're gonna beat the 11 minute for the legendary? You think they're gonna try to get squeeze that in in the first 10 minutes or? You think they're going to pace themselves out a little further in this game? Man, that was actually East Side on the Draven that had no, I know eleven it. minute Mythic. So it was impressive. I was just, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. You think East Side down a little bit? Be like, um, we can't win this fifteen and out. We gotta, we gotta play all forty five minutes of this game. Yeah, I'm kind of curious uh, on that part too, Chuck, because you know we saw some of these matches come out, you know, with kind of you know guns blazing. And they go into the second match, and it seems like they're just content to farm. And you know what? We'll just take this late game. We're just hanging out. You know what? Do we have a eight minute mark and, and and not one kill in one of the matches that we streamed. Oh, yeah, and I mean, I yeah. was like, I can't believe it. Like it, they, you know, the first match they were you know at each at each other from the get go. You know. Yeah, and it could be like we said, limit testing. They could just be testing to see. what's going on you know what what's the other team about and yeah. once they figure it out they're hey that ain't gonna work we're just gonna have to play our game and not worry about them yeah i i agree i do think that is part of it you know we see that a lot in smash where 
you know, when they're playing head to head like that, that they're kind of just testing each other out. You know, what what will you do if I do this, or what will you do in this situation? And I do think that's a lot of Don Dyson's strategy, is you know, kind of what can we get away with? You know, if if I poke here or if I go up here and face check this, what are you going to do about it? You know, and I think we do see that a lot, and it's just another thousand IQ play by these players that. I, I want to see what your tendencies are. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, if you can if you can isolate somebody's tendency and know that, hey, they're a little aggressive, they're a little more aggressive than they should be, they maybe have a tendency to dive. Maybe it'll lure them out. We may be able to, you know, wait in a nest and get them pulled out just a little bit, and then it'd be worth it. Or are they going to play conservative? Are they going to play back? Are they not going to get out of vision, you know? So. And, and I'm excited too, Chuck, that they're so successful at this game and playing these other schools across the country because I, I just kind of proves my little mantra. Uh, again, I can kind of get on my soapbox a little bit about that of, you know, we're here in the state of Arkansas and we can compete with you. And I, and I love it because I'll, I'll say it a million times, you know, just because you're small town USA – uh, just because we're in the state of Arkansas, we're a smaller state, lower population, because of the internet and the connectivity that we have and the access to these type of, of games to play, you know, we can be competitive at this if we just make the effort. I mean, there's there's literally nothing holding us back other than ourselves on that. And that, that's something I, I want us to always prove is, you know, hey, we can we can compete with Washington. We can compete with Oklahoma. We can compete with you know California, whatever state it may be. You know, when it comes to esports, we can be as competitive as anybody else. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's great because like you you know how much money this would cost to play them in football if we just play Don Tyson versus. Eastside Preparatory Football. You know how much money would be spent for that to happen? Yeah, it would be a very considerable amount to make this happen. <laughs> I mean, just the equipment, the location, the the venue, the hotel room. And no, here we're, you know, we're playing a nationwide tournament and we're getting to watch it right here in our homes. And how many high school sports can you say that about? Not any other that I'm aware of, unless I guess if you wanted to, well, I would say if they were streaming their uh, game, but they would still have to actually go somewhere to play it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know of anything else that can be done uh, in this way. And that's what makes esports unique. I love that we can play other states, even when we play in regional competition, you know, just at, at our school. And at that level, you know, I always just, you know, tell people, hey, you know, we played a team from Wisconsin today or, you know, hey, we played a team from Louisiana today. And it's just, it's just great that we can represent our school and have that kind of reach out there. I mean, you know, Don Dyson's getting uh, broadcasted nationwide as far as being in the play versus cup and, you know, representing the state of Arkansas on it. It's just amazing. Yeah, I mean – and it's funny too because like so many people have the misconception about esports so many oh video games it's games and it's like it's not games it's sports yeah and and the coach snips here talking about different size you know you just have to have the brain for it you can compete you don't have to be the fastest you don't have to be the strongest you don't have to have certain genetics you just have to be willing to get in there and put in the time and rationalize out your game plan. Yeah, I mean, that's something I've always bragged on on all of these kids is how, how intelligent they are. You, you cannot play these games at the level that these kids play them and not be intelligent. It's just not possible. And um, <laughs> Coach Smith saying it beat up their teachers for free. Yeah, yeah you're Absolutely right about that, that too. You can't use the <laughs> I'm too old to play against you uh, uh, a thing that you can with uh, a traditional sport. But, yeah, and we do have uh, players, and I have seen other players on other teams, you know, that they've never been able to compete in a traditional sport because of, you know, limitations or or whatever. Um, and But – uh, e yeah, I mean, we had one that had to play inches away from the screen 
Right, <laughs> right, and he, he, he worked com- for him. So. Yeah, he couldn't compete in anything else. So it was awesome that he could come into the lab and be in a team environment and, and play uh, with these other students and be on a team. And like I said, uh, esports transcends that, and it transcends gender too because you know, we have a couple of starters who are lady yellow jackets on our team. And they can come in and compete with everybody else. And uh, I just think it's awesome because it's, it's something that's for everyone that wants to do it. It is, is not uh, excluding anyone. So um, that's another thing that I love about esports. Yeah. It was it Washington. Um, they were kind of – which state is it that's playing around with using it for Special um, Olympics? They, they have the Rocket League – and they're introducing it in, um, I think it may be Washington State. I, I think there's several states actually doing that now, Chuck. I think that's kind of a nationwide push. I don't know if there's, like, charter schools for that or if they've, you know, just selected some schools to to do some testing with that. But I, I do know that's happening and going on, and I, I, that's awesome too. I mean, that's just something else that these kids can be a part of and own and be part of a team, be part of a group of friends, uh, and it really prepares them for later on in life because, you know, they're going to be in these same scenarios in, you know, whatever job that they take, uh, wherever they move to, wherever they live, uh, whatever social interactions they have with people. It, it's all going to come back to being based around the things that they've done, you know, in sports and esports. And so for them to be able to get that kind of experience – and be introduced to that, I mean, to me, that's priceless because they can take that into any other field they go into. Absolutely, 100%. Ooh. Hey, we may be, may be getting something going here. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, getting excited here. Hey, yeah, I am. I, I'm already excited anyway, but that just adds to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. said hopefully that they made it home okay and they'll be getting online and we'll get we'll get this fired up and ready to go because i i'm ready to i'm ready to watch the conclusion of this we've we've already got uh uh the first match in in. not real hey all right (laughs) (laughs) hey i like the love the zillion play there yeah, very nice. I said the the two supports in the bottom lane. Uh, I I think it was a brilliant move, but they had to really work hard to stay alive in that bottom lane. I know they were both squishy, didn't really have like a tank. It was it was the tougher you know. of the three lanes, I do believe. So yeah, and especially early game. Now later game, uh, once they get their ultimates, you know, get more of their abilities, get more online. I think it, you know, kind of smooths out a little bit. But that that early game, especially against that Draven, was was tough. And uh, for them to play it that way, and I mean, that was really a bold pick, Chuck, to pick two supports to play in in the bottom lane. I mean, I, I yeah. I've never seen I've never seen a, a Seraphine and Zillion in the bottom lane before ever. Uh, I'm not saying it's never happened before. But it's not very common, and a lot of times that's what it takes because, you know, you you do that and you kind of throw <laughs> the other yourself. team. Yeah, you you throw the other team kind of for a loop because they're kind of like, what are they doing? You know, and they they played it really really well. All right, they they say they're getting ready to go over here in the chat, so I love it. I can't wait to see this Don Tyson team come back out of here and get back out on the rift represent the state of Arkansas uh, with this just great team play, uh, great all-around League of Legends gameplay uh, from every lane, really, from their team. They, they really don't have a weakness. I said we've streamed them several times now, and it really is true. I mean, their support's great, their ADC is great, their mid laners great, their jungler's great, uh, their top laners. At this level, if you have a weakness, they will exploit it, so you are 100% correct. Yeah, I mean, it, it. you can't get away with, well, our top's pretty weak, so we'll just shove through mid or you know, we'll shove through bot because if the other team's seen you, they scouted you, they know what you look like, 
And if they know that you're weak in one lane, I mean, they're going to smell blood. They're, they're coming for you. Yeah, they're going to play <laughs> around that too, and it, it, it's not going to go well for you. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what we're gonna see here as far as champions. I know. I know they've got something up their sleeve. Uh, I just feel it. Uh, both teams definitely are going to put together something here. Like I said, they they've had enough of a break. You know, a drive home or wherever they're going to. You know, they you know they're yeah, thinking maybe. about this and calculating it the whole time, Chuck. I mean, you know, you and I would be too. <laughs> like, okay, all right, I got oh, a ten shoot, minute we drive. Let's about the stream <laughs> on the drive home. Yeah. <laughs> we're not even playing. <laughs> No. So like, I'm not going to say you know fifteen thousand times. I'm not going to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say um, um. I like that. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, they're they're in champion selection right now, Chuck. So we're we're about to get right back into the thick of it. I love it, love it, love it. Can't wait to see some more of this gameplay. Said so finally get to root for Don Tyson. Uh, not that we not that we don't in a regular season, like I said, we're all in one pool, so of course we want to win. Uh, every school wants to win. Uh, but they like I said they are the juggernaut of Arkansas League of Legends play, uh, no doubt. So uh, they're kind of, they're the standard, man, and I, I think that's awesome, you know. You uh, esports still young. Uh, but to say, you know, hey, when we started that, you know, we were we were the ones to beat, you know, so yeah, and, and it's yeah. they do a great job with that leadership role though, because you know a lot of these kids. Yeah, look y'all up are good. This. But yeah, are y'all Don Tyson good. No, I mean we hear it all the time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they you know it's it's kind of the well, you know Don Tyson, you know they're the four time champion, so you know can you beat them? I, I mean that's the standard. So uh, it's great to get to watch them, and and I especially when we go back to our kids, Chuck, I can be like, well, hey, uh, look what their jungler did. You know, so well, the, and the kids watch that. Wait until they're, you know, national champs, and then we can be sitting there talking about, you know, how we played against them. Well, I mean, that does make our season look even better in my mind, right, Chuck? Like, well, hey, of <laughs> course right. we didn't win; they're national <laughs> champions. <laughs> 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 no, they they definitely earned their their uh, championship status. As I said they they lost that game to ASMSA, um, and I thought, man, uh, yeah, you know, wait, they, what? Oh, what, what's going on here? Kind of, uh, you know. But I knew ASMSA had a really good team too. I mean, like I said, once you start getting towards the end of that uh, bracket, every team there deserves to be there. Uh, you you didn't get in accidentally, and man, they came back out of the second game and just completely turn it around that's why when we saw them kind of down in this match a little bit and not necessarily oh really yeah we down, knew but but i mean i i, yeah, I never no. once thought oh well it, oh, it's over of it. yeah, <laughs> you know game. no uh, no most definitely yeah, you'd not been foolish you'd have been foolish to say that they wouldn't but like we said you know i mean we can keep beating this but you know they play the long game they play the smart game and they're like we're going to be here for 45 minutes whether you like it or not I'm going to try to shut you out because we know that you're here for a reason, too. And we're going to pick our picks, and we're going to build for the final. Yeah, and I, I love being able to have this video, too, just so we can use it uh, to show our kids, too, of like, hey, look, this is what, how they built. You know, this is what they did. This this is the example of what you're looking oh, yeah. to do at oh. the high school level. You know, So it's great that we have – uh, actual coverage of it because just talking about it and seeing it is two totally different things. Oh, yeah. And watching the professionals isn't quite the same because it's, well, they're professionals. They do it 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week. Students that have the same workload as the students that, you know, we're dealing with that other coaches are coaching, you know, they, they've got the same workload. They've got the same, you know, disciplines that they have to go through. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's impressive to go. It can be done, and this is the level that we expect out of you know state champions. Uh, I I agree wholeheartedly heartedly with you there, Chuck, because that is true, and it's it's great to point at that and say they're just like you. You know, they're they're students just like you. They work hard, 
and this is the point that they're willing to take it to. So when they see that there's other kids in the state that are, are pushed to that level, it really opens their eyes to, to see, you know, wow, there's kids, you know, I thought I was pretty good, but man, look at, you know, Catamatics or, mm. you know, I'm, I'm the best Phantom. on my server. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, we, how many times have we heard that? Um, you know, and when they, they think that or see that, and then they actually get to see a game and that's level of play. I mean, I, I had a couple of players come to me uh, last year and they were like, coach, did you watch Don Tyson in the playoffs? And I was like, well, yeah, you know, I watched part of it, you know, they're like, man, they are really, really good. There's, there's no way we'd beat them. And, and that kind of got the wheels turning for me a little bit more of like, you know what? I, I need to watch this more and pay attention to it more so that we can point out that this is the level of gameplay in the state of Arkansas. Absolutely. Chuck Bears still in champion select. I know we'll have a little bit of a delay here. I can't wait to get back in this match. I'm sure anyone that's uh, viewing or listening probably can't wait for us to get back in the match so they don't have to listen to me anymore or as much anyway. But, uh, uh, it was great. Kind of, kind of nice to be able to just get on here and talk and talk about esports in the state and talk about how passionate we are about it and how much we want it to grow. And you know, highlighting the a big thing. It, it, I want to highlight especially the students, but a lot of these coaches because a lot of these coaches are doing this for the love of the game. And they're putting in countless, countless hours to make this happen. And we are too. But if we didn't, we wouldn't be sitting here right now, and, and no one else would either. So, a huge shout out to all the coaches that are, you know, stepping in the water. Maybe you got a new program. Maybe you're just starting. I I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, I had a lot of help just across the board. A lot of help from faculty, but a lot of help from other coaches that stepped in. You know, talk to me, kind of help walk me through what I needed to do to get get things going. Then, of course, I had Chuck come in here and, and just really kind of just ramp everything up to the next level. And uh, it's just amazing that that many people care that much. You know, you know, Bryant was prepared to host the state championship with what, what Chuck like a, a week and a half notice. Or something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's... Yeah, they were wanting it bad. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, to, to just think, I, I mean, you know, me, even you and I were talking about it like, man, just a lot, just, just getting permission for that. I mean, wow, and they're willing to go through all that? I, I mean, that just shows you how dedicated this community is to these games and this experience for these kids. And, man, that's it, just... It's still... It never ceases to amaze me. It never will. But it's just impressive that people will put that much work into it and believe in the programs that much, especially when you see what it does for these kids. And on the next hour, we'll have a <laughs> guest coach come on and talk about how to play Rocket League. So if you're interested in that. <laughs> hey, we're going to – we are going to expand. Our, our in, late night radio that. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this that'll is be the coach podcast. Smith, I'm listening. <laughs> No, we, we, we've been showcasing the league. We've been lucky enough to do that. We definitely want to showcase some Rocket League, uh, Smash Brothers. The Nintendo titles are a little bit harder for us to do from uh, a distance. Oh, let's see if we can spectate. This shows that they're in game here. So, Okay, good deal. Looks like we're going to be down a man. Um, getting oh. a little late. Probably time to fix dinner. Uh, it's getting there for me too, Chuck, but we we got we to gotta get this get this rolling. Let me see. I can't spectate oh, he's back. for some reason. Not sure exactly what's going on here. It may not be far enough in. I'm not sure. And I may have to restart the client. I'm not sure. Oh, close that close up your screen. screen. Okay, now I'm getting oh. instructions here. All right. See? Thank you. See, Coach. this is why I'm not supposed to be driving, that. Chuck. That's right. <laughs> okay, we are I'm in and ready to go. You. <laughs> you could argue with you. Hey, I, I never claim. Oh, look what we got in the top lane here, Chuck. <laughs> That's where oh, you're waiting to see the draft. I, I still have my T-shirt yeah. on that says 
Laugh Wizard plus Catamatics equals GG. So, uh, full fledged Laugh Wizard fan here. Uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, going to be president of the Laugh Wizard fan club. Uh, I'm going to start that up real soon. We'll have a website, we'll have Discord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> man. You know he's going to hold you to that. I would too if I was him. No, man. And we're going to see the Olaf again, Chuck. And, and look at the mid lane here. Uh, Catamax, like, you know what? You want to play Vigar? I'll show That's you how to play Vigar, buddy. <laughs> We've sure seen this a that. lot in these matches with, with the champion swapping back and forth. Uh, we are going to see a Nautilus in this match. I well, love that. I love watching Nautilus. It's as good as a band, especially if you can play it. I mean, it's. I, I agree. It really is. I, I'll just take that from you. And we're going to have the Seraphine back again. Uh, they're going to. They're just going to uh, truck on with this bottom lane here. Uh, yeah, I mean they've really held their own. Like we, you kind of seen at the beginning the the um, east side prep was bringing um, some pressure in the ADC and in the bottom lane. But you know, um, Don Tyson was like, "No, we're going to play our game, and this is how we're playing it." Yeah, and they're going to bring the Kaisa in there, too. So they're going to have a very Draven-esque type ADC down in the bottom there, too. And we got a Yone in the mid lane here. So uh, that'll be fun to watch into the Vigar. And then we got the Graves jungle. So, man, I, I'm super pumped, uh, Chuck, to see this Aatrox. Uh, you know, I've talked about it a, a thousand times. I'm sure you're tired of me talking about it. Can't help it. Uh Man, this. Hey, that's an interesting picture there. Um, hey, I, I'm working on it. Go. I'm working on it. <laughs> you scared me. I should be right. It's it's loading up over here. <laughs> what was the Eureka Springs photo about? <laughs> hey, uh, my wife's in charge of that, buddy. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Let's see here, Chuck. I still don't have anything up yet. What's going on here? Here we go. All right. That's, now how, we're... that's how we got started, though. Yeah. It's like, um, hot mic warning. <laughs> hot mic warning. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we never claim to be professionals. We just love doing this. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we're getting loaded in here, Chuck. Well, uh, remind me to make sure that I, uh, I show items because I always like to have that up. I said much, much smoother whenever Chuck's driving the studio here. So, Oh, and Chuck, they got my Astro Nautilus skin in here. That's right. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. after my own heart here. War. It looks like everybody's doing pretty good on the skin war. Hey, I love I love the uh, Astro Nautilus skin. I just think it's cool. I always uh, like to tease everyone that uh, it's a SpaceX suit. So, <laughs> hey, sorry guys, I am back now. Hey, all hey, right, just in time too. You missed the photo though. We had a good photo of. Fooey on stream. Oh man, I did miss that. Dang. That's all right. I'll send it to you later. <laughs> okay, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, okay, you'll so, see it when you rewatch our stream. So I know I missed some stuff here, but I'm seeing top lane Aatrox and jungle Olaf. Yeah, and look who's oh, in the boy. Yeah, look. I'm about to say, look who's in the top lane, baby. Oh boy. Now I will say I like the the Malphite pick. And I like, you know, Ace did a good draft too. I don't, the Graves is a good pick. Yone's tough to deal with. Kaisa Nautilus is good, but I'm telling you, I still say that Aatrox Olaf combo. Oh boy. Yeah, and do you see how uh, Catamatic said, uh, I'll take Vigar this time? Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> now, Vigar is going to be tough to play to Yone, especially early. That's going to be kind of tough. She'll have to play. Or the that Vagar is going to be played pretty close to tower, I'm afraid, for the first little bit because that Yone has really good kill potential early in the game. I mean, we've seen this Catamatics play Vagar, haven't we? Or am I getting things blurred up here? 
Uh, I think you're right. I don't, maybe earlier on, I'm not sure. I've not, I don't mind seeing Catamax play on many times recent, anyways. Okay. So I'm, okay. I'm assuming that there was a uh, Ekram ban in there somewhere. Oh, I, there's no doubt in my mind about that. But I will say, East Anon plays a very mean Olaf, too. Yeah. And, you know, I like that. I like the Seraphine bot. I mean, it worked out so well last game. Just do it again. You know, and Karma yeah. maybe even be a better champion to play with them instead of Zillion. Yeah. Uh, that was my yeah. sentiment exactly. I was like, you know what? They're just like, you know, let's, let's don't change anything about that bottom lane. Let's just do that again. So we've got Don Tyson Red in the... Um, upper right corner and um, in the lower left corner is Eastside Preparatory School. The second round. Uh, Don Tyson got a bye in the first round. I'm, I'm still uh, torn though, Chuck. I, it's Astro Nautilus. I mean, I, I, that's, that's a man after my own heart there with that Astro Nautilus skin. You, you get over it after the first, <laughs> after the first um, kill death on Oh, Astro okay. <laughs> You know, and they're they're running. They may have different champions, but they're running a very similar comp. Don Tyson is. They've got that Seraphine with that exhaust again, and Olaf picked up Ghost uh, again. So they're they're still wanting to run people down with that with that good kill potential. Oh yeah, we can look for some speed in the in you know early. So some boot. That's just how they play. Yeah, yeah. They, that which I get it. I mean, movement speed, you know, puts you in, in good shape for early team fights. It lets you get good map pressure on. So, uh, I think Don Tyson has a really good, good idea of picking up early boots. Yeah. I mean, it's consistent. So the other team can kind of count on it, but more importantly, your teammates can count on it. You know, everybody on Don Tyson knows this strategy and knows this game. Oh, I have an exhaust there. We're going to get the flash and get the hook by the Nautilus. Man, they are, they are swapping back and They're forth in this bottom lane now. Yeah, the bottom lane is going to be easier for for um, east side prep early. Uh, if they let those supports get out of hand, then it's going to get harder. What's going to end up happening is that Seraphine and Karma can heal each other. They can, you know, they got the stuns and exactly. stuff they can use. So it's going to be tough to kill them once they get, uh, yeah, especially once they get level six. Yeah, six, six to eight, the, they should start toughening up. Man, and to this Olaf, uh, we talked about the Hecarim and how much he can move, and you guys are talking about boots too. But when Olaf hits that ultimate, man, he he, he shoots right through everyone just like a rocket. So wow, man, he didn't wow. give up a whole lot of move speed or a whole lot of kill potential, I don't think, with that. But man, that's some nice Nautilus poke in the bottom lane, isn't it? Is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're hey not guys, hey. that Karma Q is no is no joke, man. Karma can put some serious damage out in a hurry. You know, Malphite's going to have a tough time up here in the top lane early because his, his last hitting is, is pretty tough for, for Malphite. And you can see right now, you know, Aatrox has already doubled uh, Malphite's CS right now. So I tell you right now, guys, about the five minute mark, which we're almost there, Aatrox is going to look to do some push here. Grace did a good job pushing him back, but Aatrox is going to be hungry here in a minute. Yeah, and they're both backing out of that. Or, well, Malphite is. Grave started to, but he didn't. So now they're just going to let him have free farm up there. Well, I don't think they have a whole lot of, of uh, choices at the moment, to be honest with you. Nice job oh. by the Nautilus coming up here. Man, they're going to get... Yeah. Yeah, nice job. Leaving lane good there. Good rotation. Yeah, excellent rotation. And the jungler coming right in there on that, too. So first blood does go to Eastside Prep. Yep, and the Yone actually got the kill on that, which is really good. You get that Yone fed early, and uh, Vagar is going to have a really, really tough time slowing him down. And now they're going to have that good uh, pressure on Dragon here. Yeah, See if here Olaf may go out. for a steal here, but man, nice, yep. nice job by the Nautilus the using the stun there, and he's going to get the Olaf too. Man, they're going to make him pay for it. Yeah, that's just, it's just good job. I mean, that, that's just you know, Olaf had he was really close to getting the steal on that one, but uh, they just played that really well. Actually, the Nautilus hook was just good timing. Yeah, the steal would have been huge, but I don't know the risk reward was there. 
Well, I think that's what they would call like uh, a 50-50 play there. There's a 50-50 chance you get it. And so it, it, if not, you give up a kill. So Yeah. And, and, you know, this early in the game, it's almost like a free back for the Olaf. He was going to back anyways and buy. So, you know, try it still. If you don't steal it and they kill you, you know, whatever. It's a free back and you can buy and come back stronger. I wouldn't call it a free back, but it is a back. I get what you're saying. Yeah, the Yone already has, guys. He's got attack speed shoes and a crit cloak already. Yeah, and he already pretty much crits everything he does anyway, so it doesn't take much for him to get that crit really through Ooh. the roof. Massive poke there in the top of the lane there. I would expect nothing less. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, nope. I'm just telling you. I know this is uh, uh, at a national level, but I'm telling you that Aatrox is nasty. Oh, they're not done, guys. They're, they're bringing Olaf up tower. here, too. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to get oh. some early plating now. Olaf is going to put a little bit of pressure on him. Pushing, yeah, still pushing. Yeah, he's going to... With that Aatrox, he's going to get some plating off that tower, too. That's going to give him some good good early gold lead. And here comes the gang. Yeah, we got a nice fight down in the bottom lane, too, man. They're, they're going to get in on top of him with the gank there. Oh, boy. Wow. Wow, guys. That's... I mean, Lapwizard better run because Vagar's coming with that cage. Now he's going to turn around. I just going to clear some wards now that he's in the river. But that, that fight right there heavily, heavily goes toward east side. And they're going to get plating down here on the bottom lane for it too. So they're going to get rewarded for that also. That Gray's, that Gray's pick is, is a good one, I think. I mean, he's... You know, Graves gets fed a little bit, and uh, he can really go to town. Now, that's a good. I think it's a good pick against the Olaf, just because of Graves' passive armor. Uh, that's going to help him out quite a bit in the early game. Yeah, absolutely, and that smoke screen. You know, you can smoke screen people and kind of disrupt that vision, uh, especially late game, just long enough to really set your team up uh, to get some kill potential. I'm really kind of surprised by the five, uh, five to one. But like I said in, in the last game, you know they're, they're going to play uh, mages in the bottom lane. You know they don't really have a tank down there per se, so it makes it a lot harder on them in an earlier game. Man, <laughs> Nautilus just Flash. misses that up there. Wow! If he would have got that, I think that Seraphine was toast. Absolutely, yeah. That, that flash timing from that Seraphine was on point. And he's running the uh, uh, Frost Ruin there, too, so that, that gives him even more slowing potential with everything around him. And he might be in trouble right here, actually. Yep, that root comes in. Yep, that he's oh, yeah. ignited. Yep. Yeah, oh man, he's, he has a stopwatch already? Wow. Yeah, that's not going to save him. That's, that's nope. going to be a double. Yep, nice job. Nice turnaround there. Oh boy. Yep. That's not what you want to do to Vigar is give him a shutdown. No. And now Yone may pay for, for dipping down here. Yep. We got the ultimate coming out from Olaf and he's gonna dive that again. Oh they're, they're, Vigar. Gonna, they're chasing him. Vigar is right there. Yeah, nice. Nice job. job. I mean that's Man, exa where exactly how right I here. would have played it if I was playing Olaf. Oh yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That, that is yeah. <laughs> Oh man, like I said, their level of gameplay is it just never ceases to amaze me. Man, look at this clear yeah. here by Aatrox. I mean it went from like full wave to absolutely nothing within like two hits. Well look at his look at his CS by the eleven minute mark, guys. <laughs> it's it's very impressive. Now we got a mythic down in the bottom lane and and on on both sides actually. I didn't even realize I I lost track before the 11 minute mark. Yeah, the Seraphine's going with that Moonstone again, which I think was a really good buy last time. It really provides a lot more healing. 
And that Kaisa uh, picked up that Kraken pretty early too. That's really going to help her uh, pump out a little more damage than she already does. Yeah, nice, nice job there getting that dragon. Said so took advantage of that push and, and got right in there and got on the dragon and got that knocked out. Yeah, two early drakes for east side. You know that's that's a pretty big deal. I, th I think you know it was, it was five to one earlier. Now it's eight to five. I think Don Tyson's they're going to come back a little bit here, like we're all expect. Uh, they're just yeah. kind of buying their time. You know they know what they know the game plan, whatever that game plan of theirs may be. Uh, but you know right now, I'm still telling you guys this Aatrox up here. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to Aatrox or Yone. Whichever one gets fed the worst is, is how this is going to play out. Well, Aatrox is just completely shoving Malphite out of lane. He's just having to completely play defense. He's being dictated to. And now you got Aatrox roaming. And I think they're yep. going to try to get this jungler here. Yeah, they know he's there. That Aatrox is going to pop the ultimate and is going to hunt him down. He may flash for him right here. Nope. They're content just to let him. Yeah, but they just, dis you know, they just disrupted his farming there. And even though they didn't get him, now here he comes around the backside and Malphite may end up getting caught out on this. I'm not sure what all he still has left in the tank. Man. So and then he's going to get him from the other side. Look. Yep. <coughs> yep. That's, that's impressive, guys. I'm telling you. Good um, job on the Olaf, too. Oh, that Yone, though. Yone gets it, he gets it back, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, I will be selling some uh, Laugh Wizard uh, plus Catamatics equals GG t-shirts uh, after this match. So if you just want to DM me, uh, we can get those to you for thirty dollars plus shipping. Holy! <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got their. I, I, I meet up with it, aren't I? I mean, I, I, I can't help it, guys. I just, like I said, it's great to be able to root for this team. Uh, I, I love these kids' gameplay, so I know we pick. I pick favorites sometimes, uh, just from us watching. But it's it's definitely a hats off to the entire team because everyone makes this happen. Yeah, we're seeing some mythics come out now. The Grays picked up his Eclipse. Uh, the Aatrox picked up, which I really like. The Gore Drinker. Uh, it's a little more damage, and you heal back the damage on some of that that you do. Uh, the Vagar's got the Everfrost, really strong item for him, kind of helps keep it slow. Uh, like we said before already that the uh, Seraphine has the Moonstone, so uh, Karma's got a, a big chunk of her Mythic built. Not sure what she's going to get just yet with hers. Um, uh, probably the Battle Song, maybe. Yeah, I think you're right. That, that'd that be good for the mana regen uh, alone, just with that. But I look at I look at Aatrox just put you know what saying you know what I'm taking your wave I'm taking your lane uh, I'm taking your parking spot at work uh, whatever I want <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's kind of, kind of similar as last game but maybe flipped a little bit here now we've got you know Aatrox here is building some armor because he knows that you know Grave's going to be is it's going to be pumping out some damage uh, physical damage Yone's physical damage. So uh, I think those are the two that's the the strongest, obviously, right now, and that's a smart build path on his on his part. Yeah, man, they they this Vigar is really doing a good job of keeping pressure up on this Yone in this mid lane, and, and it's getting later too. And I mean, early, you know, I really thought he would kind of have some issues with the Yone, but he's done really well handling it. Yeah, and that's impressive too because that that's not an easy matchup for a Vigar at all. No, because that's a, if you miss your cage and you're too far out, you're dead. And he's, he's done a great job of, of handling that. Now they're going to get in here and push the Olaf out, but man, he's going to pull the ultimate out on him, and he's yep. got a little help here. I'm not sure, and now we got Aatrox coming in too, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now they're fighting the war on two fronts. Good, good yeah. Malphite ult, though. Yep. Excellent. That's the, where that Malphite ult comes in handy, guys. Yep. It can just separate a member or two. Ooh, and Vigar Ooh. getting one. Man, uh, Vigar the with yeah. the you're deleted. And just like that, <laughs> yeah. uh, Aatrox and Vagar comes in and turn the ties of the battle. Oh, one thing too, uh, they're not on the same they're on the same team, but 
Uh, a lot of times if you have someone who can CC Yone, especially if you can get around to where he begins uh, his attacks from, man, when, if he uses that all when he gets back, it's really high risk for him because he doesn't have anything left in the tank once he gets back to where he started. Yeah, that's true too. You know, you, you've been the Vagar pick. We're trying to look at the Vagar pick. Uh, well, hang on. I'm going to just you know, do his thing. Yeah. Here. Okay. I say Fair that, and then, he, then he's going to come down here and uh, just about solo Seraphine. John Tyson heavy on the Drake here. Yeah, they uh, need this one. coming in to counter it. They Ooh, really nice need this here. Right, this Man, yeah. ultimate coming out from Seraphine. There's that CC. Man, they're get, yep. going to get in and there. There they go, and, guys. It's, it's playing up time. Yep. As long as Olaf keeps swinging them axes, Tyson he's going to survive. Out. Man, and look at the support over there with such low health and still wow. contributed to that entire fight, Wu Pao. Man, I yep. love it. Seraphine That's... did not back, stayed there, and was just CC from a distance. Huge difference in that, that fight. It was so huge on Don Tyson, but like we said, you know, around the 15, 20 minute mark, Don Tyson starts getting in those team fights, and it's tough. They're, they're, they got a team build every game, they build this team fight. Like nobody's business. And I love that they went back with almost the exact same bottom lane. Kind of like, you know what? We like that, and you just deal with it. We'll, we'll use a little bit different uh, champion build here, but we're basically doing the same thing over again. Yeah, I think it's such an it's such an intelligent move on their part. Uh, you know that they now have all their mythics online. Both teams do actually now. Well, Nautilus is still not picked his up yet. Uh, but that, that Karma and Seraphine are going to better do some serious work, guys. They've already, between the two of them, you know, got, what, 12 assists already in the game, and there's been 13 kills. So, yeah, they're, they're going to be in the battle every single time. Yeah, and I love that they both actually go in healing items, too. I mean, uh, especially with the battle song, man, that just gives more movement speed, and then you got the cooldown boots on top of that. Man, it's just... Uh, their, their team fight potential is just going to keep ramping higher and higher and higher. Yeah, I love it. You know, and now that Olaf has his Gore Drinker as well, him and Aatrox both have their armor boots. Mm, uh, interesting uh, setup here. I mean, I just, yeah, Seraphine's going to pay. There's nothing she could really do on that one. No, they had that set up. The tower. The tower, too, yeah. That's yeah that was a nice guy comes, there. It comes rotation. Don Tyson may rotate in on this one, guys. There, that may, that may have hacked him off a little bit. <laughs> I think yeah, these kids play cage. without emotion, though. <laughs> I think these kids play without emotion. They just go in for the stone cold kills. What well, I was gonna say earlier, Phil, you know, you talked about that Vigor and how important it is, and that that cage. Yeah, it has a stun, but it can also be used for a zoning technique. You can zone off a big chunk of the map. Uh, and people, you know, if they walk into it, they're stunned, and they have to walk all the way around it to get to a team fight. Uh, so, so there's a lot, a lot of uh, team fight capabilities just in that one ability. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely definitely more than just the cage um, in zone control. I mean, you can close off almost the whole river path. Yeah, you guys are right about that. I've I've seen uh, a couple of our uh, kids play Vigar, and they just use the cage more for zoning than they did trapping. And you can completely shut off a choke point with it. I, I love how they just freely swap lanes, too. I mean, it's just kind of like, okay, well, I'll just go bot now, and you can go mid, and, and I'll go top. And yeah, I'm I mean, just, it's this. just so fluid. Yeah, this. it's so fluid when they do it. It's like you don't even realize that they're in a different lane. And the Vigar just finished up the Zonyas. That's going to be really important for his survivability, too. If he gets jumped on, he can Zonyas, let his team come in and do some work, and then and still survive it. Another nice stun there by Seraphine. Uh, I guess that's yeah, saving, saving her right there. That stunned, the stun stunned all three of them. And there again, you know, they, they, they took a big group push mid, and what does Aatrox do? Pops Herald in the top lane. Kills one tower and is going to get it pushed all the way into this. Oh nope, nope. That mouth is going to kill it just in time. But still, that's a tower down and, and pressure on that top lane already. Yeah, it's definitely give and take. You you can't just ignore any part of this map. No, but you're right. Aatrox putting putting the heat on up there, and you got the thousand IQ play by the support. 
making sure to not give up a, a kill. Now they gave up a tower, but he turns it around and takes a tower up top. So it's kind of like, well, okay, you took our tower, now we took yours. New team's turret has been destroyed. Yeah, now the Aatrox has a death dance online, which is going to be a big item for him. We see that Seraphine building that uh, flow, staff flowing waters again, uh, just provide that much more healing. Uh, but on the other side, um, you know, the Graze is looking strong. Uh, the Yone just finished an Infinity Edge, so his crit just, yeah, he's he's going to be pretty close to maxing out that crit already. Yeah, and he's got the Cringe Bow online too, so that's going to make him even harder to kill. And they're, we're, they're going to fight over this Drake, I'm sure. Yeah, they're going to fight, Absolutely. for sure. I still like Don Tyson's team fight here, guys. I just think yeah, he's too strong. There's a good Seraphine ultimate. And here we go. Good cage by the Vagor. They even trades yeah, right now. East side is just like, we're going to have to win the team fight, so we might still suck it up and try it. Yep, it's the Aatrox, guys. That, that's, that's the missing link here. They, they can't be dealt with. Uh, <clears throat> I have yep. uh, Laugh Wizard plus Catamatics equals GG t-shirts that I will be selling after this match. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we mentioned it before. If you get, if you get him eight trucks, I mean, you're asking for defeat, oh. almost. Yeah, He's that he good with this right. champion. Man, he is off the chain with that Aatrox. I mean, it, but his whole team, being able to play around him like they do just makes him that more effective. And that's I mean, what my they son's do, but... already talking about Aatrox now. I mean, it, this, you know, he's going from ADC Jinx to Aatrox top lane, like, overnight. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, uh, like, it's just like the Seraphine play there, just like Wu Pao pointed out. The very first of that fight, what do we get? We get the Seraphine ult, we get everybody stunned, you get Aatrox coming in on the back line, comes in on the back side after him, uh, going after the squishies. And and that's what happens. Then you end up with the Aatrox triple kill and and winning the team fight. And like I said, it's just 1,000 IQ by that support player knowing that, hey, you know what? I'm going to lead in with this and, and get that stun out there, and my team's going to go to town. And, you know, what? what's different from, from these guys right here, they're so intelligent, as you mentioned. You know, a lot of teams, they would drop everything at once. But Don Tyson said, okay, I'm going to ult Seraphine first, get, get a little bit of damage in. Then I'm going to drop a Vagar Cage. Then my Aatrox is going to ult, and it just sets up the whole team fight where it's just bam, 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 and everybody's dead. Yeah, and you, you make an excellent point there, Wu Pao, because if Aatrox ults in the beginning of that, guess what? When it comes down to those last two kills, his ultimate's probably either ending or already ending, and then it doesn't go that way. But because they're so smart, they play around each other. It's just so impressive to see these student athletes play, man. They're they're incredible. Okay, so the Malphite ult gets used on this one, and that, that's going to be uh, something a little yep. different. Yeah. Yep. Nice, nice job on that. But, but yeah, here comes Aatrox. Yeah, here Seraphine. comes Aatrox with. Uh, it, yeah, this is my lane. And, and Olaf's just yeah, going to beat the tar the out of them. Heels coming. Yeah. Out. So I mean, they have nowhere to go, guys. They're all dead. No, and They're then, yeah. and then he got Olaf with the bubble, and he's just gonna run out of it after after the ultimate. Yeah, I mean, doing what they can to protect that tower, but it's over. Look at Aatrox, guys, in the base. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't I'm care. telling you, man. Look at it. I mean, <laughs> he's got Seraphine out there with him, throwing bubbles he's on him. Gonna... He's not even lost any health. He's in the base, killing people. And and of course, in Laugh Wizard style, got to give the little thumbs up. Yep. And now just move on into Baron and clear this. I mean, this game, guys, is this is not as close as the last game. This I is think, kind I of think maybe excited. who needs to add the little thumbs up icon on his shirt to the shirt. I, I yeah, I, I was gonna go for another shameless plug there, but since how you did it for me, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> wow, man, this 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 team play when they have Aatrox to play around is is. Unbelievable. Unbelievable play by Don Tyson I'm here. To, I'm trying to yes. play Devil's Advocate, but I don't know what what um, Eastside can do to turn this around. I mean, the only thing they can do now, now that objective bounties are online, you know, they can try to get some towers and maybe a dragon and get some extra gold going on. But, uh-oh. We've got an issue. Laugh Wizard is DC'd. 
No. And that's part of it, guys. That's the joy of technology. That's that's the one thing that can always count on to be an issue. Yeah, you're you're right about that. And I think we've had more connectivity issues in these last couple of matches that, that we've been a part of than we had all season long, I think. But now, you are playing, what, 1,600 miles away. But so. I, yeah, but I was about to say, but they are in Washington, so, I mean, that's a pretty good stretch, but... Still very, very nice high level gameplay oh, from both I teams was wrong. here. We're closer to twenty five hundred miles away. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you just map quest that? <laughs> oh yes sir, I did. You bet I did. <laughs> now he pulled out the Atlas Fooey, put his ruler down there and count counted the hash marks. It's <laughs> because we're just that old. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. That's right. Hopefully we can get everybody back going here in just a moment and resume play. But, I, I mean, you know, like I said, I think the objective bounties may help East out a little bit. But other than that, guys, Don Dyson is just looking. I mean, look at. Look at the jungler, the mid, and both bottom lane. I mean, they're just, they're right there even. And then you got the mountain of a man, Aatrox, at the top that's just coming in and just murdering everybody. And you, your jungler's got 13 assists uh, along with your, you know, 11 and 15 down there from the bottom lane. That just shows you how much team fighting they're doing. And that's how they like to play. You know, they, they prefer it to be that, that way. And I really thought this malfight could help set up more team fights, but... Man, that's, Donald Tyson does such a good job of wrapping around fights. They may have two in the front and three coming at you from, from a different angle, and they just they just sandwich you in, and there's not a dang thing you can do about it. Yeah, they, they're really going kind of for that uh, hammer and anvil kind of fighting strategy where you know they, they come at you from your back line and, and take out your uh, squishy champions, focus them, uh, while they're using some CC on that front line, and, and man, it, it just takes them just a couple of seconds, and they got you mopped up. Absolutely. Now we're back underway, guys. We're we're ready to play now. Hey, let's see how they play out this Baron buff here. Uh, I want to see if they can get uh, you know another tower off of it, or if they're just going to set use it to set up for the next dragon. Kind of how they're going to play this out here. Mm. You know, something to notice here too, guys, is that Seraphine kind of knows that she's maybe the squishiest one of the bunch here. So built, she built some really good healing items and then built a GA. So if she dies early, she's going to come right back and she's going to keep churning out that heals and that damage and those stuns. Yeah, so important for her to stay in the fight and so easy for her to get picked off. 100% right there. Oh, wow, guys, the, the Aatrox built a GA as well. Oh boy, you gotta kill him twice now. And that too, I, I didn't mention this the last time and I wanted to, I said I was going to, as you know, your support player is the one that, that's doing a lot of this warding and doing the majority of the warding a lot of times. So these wards you see on the map here, that, that's the responsibility of your support a lot of times. And so uh, having a really, really good support, man, it just gives you so much vision. Here we go, guys. They're yeah, here we go. Yep. Like ultimate, but they just got so much sustain. I mean, here comes Aatrox and Olaf. Look at this. Yep. Good job. Good job by the by the Malphite ultimate. Yeah. And a good job picking up a kill, but then it's Aatrox and 
oh, start swinging away, and it's just everybody dies. As president of the uh, Laugh Wizard uh, fan club, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this is this is going to be uh, part of the highlight reel that we that we will have posted. Man. Yeah, there's we could have a Laugh Wizard highlight reel on its own video. Yeah, we, look at this, guys. They're 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 punishing. They, they may even want to say, oh no, they may be happy with just this, or they may just keep pushing the base, guys. Hey, I, if I was them, I they're, they're just keep pushing. I mean, yeah, they why not? I mean, they look at they this. can. Olaf, great big arcade. Set up that killer right there. Yep. I don't, and man, just oh my goodness! Wow, go. it's, they're just going to town. Yeah, it does look like Don Tosh. Oh, and they do get Laugh Wizard, but he's just going to go ahead and use the yeah. angel and right back, <laughs> right back yep. in there. That's, that's wow, GG, that's guys. GG. Towers. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to watch it fall right here. Hey, Man. everybody, thanks for joining us today. Exciting, exciting gameplay. Don Tyson versus Eastside Preparatory um, in the national tournament. This is the second round, so be prepared to watch that. Don Tyson move further up in the ladder and we'll just see how far they can go. I think they'll play on Friday, but we'll double check that and, and make sure what to put that out the, there. Uh, does anybody know have the brackets? How many how many teams are left after after the second round? Uh, I'm not I did have a a, a a screenshot of the bracket. I'd have to pull it back up and look at it, Chuck, to tell you. I uh, know there was several buys in the first round because they I'll didn't see. fill those slots. Y'all talk about this game, and I'll see what I can find and okay. get that information out to people. Uh, love, love, love the gameplay coming out of the state of Arkansas. Woo pig. Uh, there you go. We're not the biggest state. Um, we're not the highest populous state. Probably have a third of the League of Legends players in our state, as other states do. And Don Tyson School of Innovation – making us proud, making us look good. Congratulations, Coach Sniff. It should be another feather in his hat as far as I'm concerned. Uh, good job to his team, his kids, for their gameplay. Uh, he said the secret was to offer them sushi. So uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, Don Tyson might be going for a little sushi after this match, uh, Wu Pao. Yeah, I think <laughs> there's no doubt they deserved it right here. You know, with certain games, you hear the word death ball a lot. Well, I think that's exactly what Don ball. Tyson is. <laughs> I mean, they come at you in one big wad, and you're going to die, especially when you have an Aatrox that's that's built like that. I mean, what was he, 11, 1, and 10? I mean, I don't I mean, There's not much you can do about that, guys. The Olaf did a really good job. The Vagar cages were on point, and we already mentioned the two support players, just how well they played to keep everyone up and everyone alive uh, and just you know let the Aatrox and Olaf go to town. Yeah, it's just great gameplay all around, great team play. Man, I, I think they really just figured out after that first match, hey, this is what we're going to do. Uh, if they don't ban the Aatrox, this is how we're going to play. We're going to just go back to I, – I think that's just their comfort zone there. If they can get that Aatrox in there, they're going to build around Laugh Wizard uh, with East Phantom, Catamatics, uh, the, the, their support uh, – and ADC, and like you said, yeah, man, they're right. gonna they're gonna say, you know what? We're gonna team fight every single time. Hmm. We're not we're not gonna take any. We don't care about one on ones. Now, if we get one or catch you out, cool. But really, what we're gonna do what, is we're gonna team fight you, and we're gonna win when we team fight because you're not gonna be able to stop us. Yeah, that's what Don Tyson does so well. I know we we just and it's just been this has been the exclamation point on that. They build for the late team fight, and they finish it. You know, normally in a game like this, yeah, okay, the Aatrox was super fed and, and was, you know, really far ahead of everybody else and was really pumping out the damage. But look at the other four guys on the team. Look at the assist categories. Uh, you know, look at, look at the kills. They're all similar. They're all equally built. So they have a good build path that they use, that they, that they feel comfortable with. And, man, it's just it's hard to deal with these guys. I really like this double support bottom lane. I've not seen that much, but man, you talk about intelligence. When you know that you've got three other guys on your team uh, that can really snowball and take over a game, and you're smart enough to know, hey, if I pick two supports down here and hold my own for the first 
you know, 12, 15 minutes of the match, I can keep them alive the rest of the time, and they can just wail on people. Yeah, with that, tw- look at that, 24 assists, 15 assists, 19 assists, 11 assists, even 10 assists for the top. I mean, that tells me right there, their team fighting together. Uh, 24 assists, man, just 4-2 and 24, 3-5 and 15. I mean, you couldn't ask for any better uh, out of your, bot, especially two squishy uh, bot laners. Man, it, it's just, it's impressive. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, I'm looking at some of the different categories here, and that, that gold per minute is a big one. And Aatrox and Olaf and, and Vagar, their gold per minute is just crazy high numbers. Uh, they, that's why they were able to get such an early lead and get some early items built. And from there, it was just, it was downhill for Eastside. Yeah, they, they played a phenomenal first match, man. That that first match was just back and forth. You know, they were just almost dead even, you know, 12, 12 minutes into the game. Uh, Don Tyson got, you know, into the team fight mode, and, and they just took over. And it's like, uh, kind of like we said, you know, I feel like they were kind of limit testing there a little bit. On this second game, they, they came out and said, okay, this is what we know we can get away with. Uh, we, we know what your tendencies are. You know, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to play. And they dictated that entire second match. I mean, look at it however you want to, but they pretty much said, this is what we're doing. This is where we're coming through. We're going to take this, get out of our way. And and they just took over and dominated that second match. Yeah, they did. And, you know, the first, I don't know, maybe the first 10 minutes of the game, Eastside looked good yet again. But Don Tyson does such a good job of just like, eh, it's okay. You know, you get you a few kills now. We're going to do our thing, and come 15-minute mark, we're going to flip the script on you, and we're coming after you. Uh, so what do you got planned for uh, a Friday evening, Wu Pal? Man, I want to see some more of this right here, brother. <laughs> That's okay. me, too. I, I blocked it. I, I hope we can stream the match. I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I will reach out to Coach uh, Sniff again and see if we can. I really hope we can. Man, I, I love, love, love that this is what the state of Arkansas is producing in esports. Uh, it just it makes us it makes us all look good. Uh, and I just love that these kids are this dedicated to this and, and play at this high level across the board. Uh, nothing but but great things to say about the program that up there at Springdale. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yep, hats off to to Coach Sniff and his team. Uh, hats off to Eastside. I'm not sure who their coach was. I unfortunately didn't get his get his or hers name. But uh, you know, to make it to this point, you got to be pretty dang good, and it shows. Yeah, I wish I could have found the um, the play versus brackets. Not being able to come up with it because I'd be interested because I know there's not a whole lot that play in the play versus cup. I mean. Not all 50 states are represented in it. Um, there's now, quite a few. Yeah. Uh, some but of the states. We've got to bind the first. And the, uh, some of the states, Chuck, had uh, two invitations for like the uh, winner okay. and the runner yeah. up. So now some states, I think, did have like two uh, representatives okay. uh, going into this. So I'll have to look that up and I'll, I'll get it posted. Uh, that way yeah. everyone can see and, and we'll know who's coming up for Friday. See. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see who's coming up for Friday, and I want to see, you know, how far they are because I know they're getting close. And hopefully Chuck will be able to drive Friday. We'll see how that works out. I'm not sure, but uh, if he can drive, and uh, it'll it'll go a lot smoother on the stream, I promise everybody. So thanks for sticking <laughs> with us. Thanks for putting well, we up enjoyed with my... the, We enjoyed the photograph. Um, <laughs> <laughs> be looking forward to rewatching this and seeing the photograph. Um, if anybody's late coming to the show, you might want to rewind it to a big long pause in the middle, and you'll get to see um, a, a Fooey playing a fool. <laughs> uh, and and uh, before Friday, I, I'm going to go ahead and get my Laugh Wizard plus East Phantom uh, plus Catamatics plus Mocha Pearl and plus Celadon. Equals GG We're gonna be t-shirt. Those up. Yeah, I, I yeah, will. Uh, I'll have it on. Yeah, if you're driving, Chuck, I'll, I'll have that on camera, uh, so everybody can see that I'm not joking. Uh, really, this entire team is is phenomenal. 
I said, it's been a pleasure to get to watch them play and compete and cast them. Uh, thank you all very much for it. I appreciate it. Um, it's been a blast. Yep. Well, we'll hope to catch you same place on a Friday, same time as well. Hey, thank you guys for doing this with me too. Yeah, I know it's y'all's time too, and I really appreciate it. It's it, it couldn't work with two better people to help pull this off. No, no, it's it. You know, you make this happen. Uh, your your passion for this makes it happen. We appreciate you too, Fooey. You bet.